had at least one member of the Gonia Steridae on this cruise so far. Now I want some Kool-Aid. <laughs> I used to only be able to drink the lemonade flavor when I was younger. Mm. I couldn't drink any other mm. color for whatever reason. Oh, before we go out of frame, can we get a partial on that sponge going by down there? I think that's the same one that we collected earlier. Just be nice to get another confirmation of it's where it is on this mountain. What did you say, Diane? Does that look pretty similar to what we collected? Yeah, it does actually. I'm trying to see kind of the base of it a little bit. Can we get a, some stills of that just to make sure we yeah, have it? Yeah, I got it. Great, thanks. Someone's wondering, have have we ever found fossils during a dive? Well, not yes, not on this one, but has. Yep. Uh, so it hasn't happened uh, yet on this expedition, mm -hmm. but on our previous ROV expedition in the Papahanaumoa Kuakea last year, um, the Lua Ea Ahiki uh, Kapapaku expedition. In a 134, um, we observed a uh, fossilized, or it was basically a manganese encrusted um, rostrum, which is part of the head of a beaked whale. Oh, cool. While the rest of the whale had degraded long ago, mm -hmm. that part of those beaked whales <laughs> is very resistant to degradation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. can commonly be observed as a fossil of. Uh, Oops skeletal remains of that marine mammal. And we, we observed one on that seamount. So it was an indication to us that a beaked whale had at some point been in that area. Wow. In the uh, west, uh, east of here, on the abyssal plains of the Pacific between Hawaii and uh, the contiguous part of North America, there's actually quite a lot of beaked whale fossils that have been observed on the mm. sediment there. Yeah. Um, uh, those are a relatively elusive marine mammal in terms of our understanding of its behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, there's actually a story, uh, a short video clip about the finding of that fossilized beak whale um, rostrum uh, in the highlights from that expedition. So if you went to the Nautilus live page and found the web page for the Nautilus NA-134 expedition, you can find that video clip. That's really cool. Was it um, at depth similar to this or deeper? Yes. Yeah, OK. Yep. It was in a spot that looked just like oh. this. <laughs> so we were just kind of going over <laughs> rocks, yeah. you know, seeing what went, went by. And we spotted it and wow. zoomed in on it. And I, um, I remember seeing presentations about this at yeah. the Deep Sea Biology Society. Um, wow. And so and the Nautilus Live fans kicked into action. <laughs> on Facebook and Twitter and <laughs> shared photos and got connected to some of the experts who study those things. And I'm like, yep, that's what it is. Wow. wow. That must have been amazing. Um, so those are the only ones that I'm aware of that come to mind in terms of thinking about finding fossils. Mm 
Well, Beth, what would you say about the encrusted uh, sponge skeletons? Really old sponge skeletons that have a little bit of manganese crust on them. Yeah, those good count? point. Yeah, like those dead frayed sponges that we see sometimes. Yeah. I guess you could call that a fossil. I don't know how. I don't know that we know how old they are. <laughs> and I also don't know what if there's an age definition for a fossil. Right. Yeah. Um, so we'll, let's maybe say that's a metafossil. Like it. Yeah, I like it. Ooh, a metafossil. <laughs> What's that yellowish top center? Let's yeah. have a zoom in there, please. Go ahead. Is it just Dead sponge? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, thank you. Rest in peace. I'm back into the hemichorallium. Yep. Why do they grow in like a line like that? And I that? just love it. I love just it so much. Is it like one person settles and they're like, hey, family, can I sit next to you? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Just, you know, is it like attraction? Like, it's interesting. And they just like follow the line of those more sturdy rocks and like jump right over like the more crumbly parts and keep going. Interesting. I wonder if they can, like, corral currents. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can we get a partial zoom on this right here? Yeah. I'm betting squat lobster. Go ahead, Steve. Survey says... Survey says. Squat lobster. A squat lobster. Thank you. Thanks. Come on. So it looks like we have another black coral here. We've got Cephe hemichorallium, what appears to be Norella species here. I think off to our right, we saw kind of a leggy Jason Isis, bamboo coral. Not quite certain on that ID, but. You say Jason Isis? Yes. Is that named mm -hmm. after a scientist or is that named after Jason and the Argonauts? Uh, I do not know. It could also just be named after Jason ROV. Oh, Sometimes yeah. <laughs> that also <laughs> happens. Where, let's see if we can find out where its name came from. We've been doing a lot of uh, name research yeah. today. Is that etymology? I believe so. Viewer from Mexico checking in. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to put some questions in the box if you have them. Which direction are we heading in again? Three three zero is the way I'm heading right now. Three two five. Yep, I'm heading northwest up the si eastern side of this. Got it. Small summit. If um, Lynette, do you mind zooming out, uh, zooming way out on high pack so we can see the spine of Argonaut? Yeah, great. So Argonaut is almost a north-south oriented ridge feature. Um, unlike many of the 
safety mounts we've been diving on on this expedition. It is not a flat-topped GEO, uh, which means it probably never had enough magmatic activity to form a giant volcano that was subaerial or and then subsided and had a coral reef on top of it. Um, it's only ever been below the sea surface. Um, and we are diving on the southern end of this ridge. It, the ridge keeps going further off of high pack, the high pack view here. Um, probably, we're only exploring about a third of it mm -hmm. on this dive. Are um, we reaching the total summit, the yeah, highest just point? About to ask we, the same thing, yeah. I think we picked the highest summit, if not close to the highest summit. But it like cool. doesn't get much higher than this okay. as you move north. Rudge. Um, I feel like we just got Chrysogorgia back. We didn't see much of it lower, the occasional. It was still there, it was just small. Yeah, it was small and not as plentiful, and now we're seeing more of it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We're seeing these longer ones, longer mm -hmm. bottle brush type. Mm -hmm. Can we get a partial on like this over here, please? Ooh, yep, sure. Things want to be up on the ridge top. Well, I think the smallness might actually have to do with um, that, how we think the slope was failing there. And so oh, okay, so it's everything, everything down. In, yeah, so what we're seeing are smaller things that are probably younger. Younger animals. Okay, I think that's just a dead sponge stock. Weird perspective on that. Yeah. Interesting Thanks. rock. Uh, okay, can come wide. Thanks. So other things that we haven't really seen on this dive, I'm commenting earlier about how we haven't seen the yellow stocked crinoids. I haven't seen any Victor Gorgia. Yeah, the no purple. purple. No yeah. purple. No purple. Um, I don't think we've seen any of the, um, oh, what are they called? Iridogorgia, those firework no. chrysogorgia that we were seeing on the last dive. Are those also the spirally ones too? Yeah, the spirally yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ritigorgia bella. Um, so there's definitely some biogeography in this part of the monument. Bridge nav. Can we move another three zero meters bearing three three zero, please? Thank this you. guy's on Look the go. Look at that lobster moving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we get a partial zoom on that? on that, please? Yep. Little go squat ahead. lobster. Being very active. Is it a squat lobster? Or is it a crab? It's a crab. That's a crab. What's swimming around what it? Uh, it's a swimming. different type of shrimp, I think. Oh. What's he nomming on? All right. He's got something. Mm. Everything is pink here. I know. I'm one. I need to know more about <laughs> these well, squat lobsters and why they're these colors. This one has all of its legs and doesn't seem that it's gotten in any fights like some of the other oh, yeah. crabs that we've seen. Like grandpa Look crab. Look at the spines <laughs> there. A tiny little baby coral off to the side. <laughs> Same color. Wow, well, small. <laughs> they're matching. They're matching. They don't. They take their matching very seriously in this part. <laughs> Great, you can come wide. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> All right, let's move up this slope. Getting steeper now. All right, coming up. Coming up. Oh, and we're back in the big fans. Oh, yep, here mm -hmm. we go. Back in the big fans. Ah. Beautiful Atlanta view.
I get a reset, please? Yep. Can we get a partial on the squat lobsters here? Yes, we can. I want to see what they're on. All right, go ahead. Ooh, this is new. What is this? Interesting. Long arms. I do not know. Oh, it's kind of this coral or hydroid. I do not know what this is. Look at how it zigzags. Yeah, I was like just about stem, to say like, that. Very and zigzaggy. And then it branches and like. If any of our internet experts know what kind of coral that is, <laughs> right. I would appreciate you telling me because I, I do not know. Or scientists a lounge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Scientists <laughs> lounge. You're also welcome to chime in. All right. Thank you. Hi. I'll see what I can find as well. It takes me a little bit. One guess from scientists' the lounge is that it's quite a gorgeous stem covered in hydroids. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Okay. I didn't realize they had the zigzaggy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What was that again? Oh yeah. Um, Probably. I guess it was quite a gorgeous stem covered in hydroids. So I don't know if it's a different kind, oh. but this is but one the of the zigzaggies. Yeah. So, guess from science scientists' the lounge. <laughs> Chrysogorgid skeleton with hydroids on it. Yeah, okay. Maybe I just never noticed the zigzagginess nature of maybe these bottle brush because we just see the Because they're always the bristles. healthy. Yeah, right. We see the bristles maybe. Yeah. Maybe. If it's that type. Yeah. Okay. Well, learn Thanks, something new. Thanks, viewers. Yeah. Yeah. You have scientists lounge commenting on the Nautilus live feed and not the uh, portal? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can kind of see it a little oh. bit. Okay. Some of these. Bridge. All right. Now. We see a black coral here. Oh, yes. Can we move three zero meters bearing three three zero, please? Thank you. Hey, Stephen, do we record Telestrator or do we record the raw feed? Okay. Some of them actually do look like they have that yeah. exact, yeah. Huh. Oh. Roger. This is yeah, a I've been trying to narrate oh, what I'm pointing at. Yeah. So, because I know that the telestrator marks aren't kept. Raj. So the Chrysogorgia abludo has that structure. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting that mixed up. This was from uh, folks viewers, <laughs> not scientists lounge, sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Sorry, that was from our very smart viewers. <laughs> yeah, we've got <laughs> Nautilus Live has some really great fans. <laughs> no. Sorry. Some we have to give them a name too, scientists. I don't know. <laughs> a view. A home. Looks a, like home. A, a home. home. Scientist is a home. <laughs> a short. Well, that's. Yeah, that's. Yeah. That's that yeah. Yeah, nice job with that ID, scientist mm -hmm. at home. <laughs> no, we need a better name. <laughs> Doesn't flow quite as well. Doesn't work. No, no, no. Scientist in lounge, science at, just at shore. A casa. Scientist a casa. A casa. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we're faced almost due north uh, orientation with Herc, and we can see that the fans are almost 90 degrees to us, which might suggest that the current comes from our east, predominantly. Trevor, do you mind, um, if it's safe, <laughs> uh, panning right and left, just so we can kind of see what sure is thing. around us? Right is easy. We'll start there. OK. I'm going to look a little farther here. Oops, not like that. I won't. That's a great view. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's check the other way. It's like All we're right. almost in a little pocket here Yeah. in the Atalanta view. More, more rock slidey over on that side. Yeah. Maybe less, a little less stuff. And there, there we go. There's some fans over there. But wow, how, how sheer, how oh. steep this cliff is here. Ooh. Mm, that's yeah. Great. Thanks. All right. Close your eyes if you get seasick. <laughs> that's me. I'm gonna close them <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. You can open them again. Okay. Maybe if you swing your swivel chair as you do that, it will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to take any chances. Someone asked the other day if we're on rolling chairs. We're not, but we are on swivel chairs. Yeah. I think they recline, too, a little bit. I don't know oh how, Oh, yeah, though. they do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to get my two. <laughs> they it's recline. over here on the left-hand side. <laughs> rolling chairs on a boat. Yeah. That would be dangerous. That sounds like... Certain death. <laughs> the pilot chair is bolted to the floor. So you can't <laughs> even slide with a big roll. Oh, wow. These chairs are so heavy. They are. At any time I try and move it, I'm like, oh. I know, they make a lot of noise, too, <laughs> yeah. when you're trying to scoot them in. But in the mass, they're not heavy, and so you slide, even though they're not rolly chairs. <laughs> so I know there is a reason. <laughs> I've seen somebody just slide right into the trash can. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Aww. laughs> yeah. I've definitely had more than one plate of food on my lap on this ship. <laughs> really? Oh. oh, name the suggestion, somebody for the folks at home who are helping us informed enthusiasts. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's nice. I mean, I bet a bunch of people in that public chat are also scientists. You know, oh, yeah, so probably. Like, sure. Bridge, Nav. Everyone's a, sci a scientist. A science enthusiast, maybe? <laughs> Not informed enthusiast. Can we move three zero meters bearing 330, please? Thank you. Some black so corals Trevor, there. Hello. Um, might want to be thinking about collecting a rock sample soon. Rock sample soon. Okay. Um, I know we just called it a move, so I'm not wanting to do it right this minute. But just cool. giving you the heads up. Why don't we let this just called in move finish and settle out, and then we'll keep swinging for another five minutes and then okay. take a rock sample. Sounds good. That'll be just shy of the summit. Yeah, see again, these fans in a row. In a oh. row. Mm -hmm. They're it's all just, lined it's up. Just and I'm, I'm, you see it a lot, and I'm really curious why. I know. It's blowing my mind. Look at that. Ball. Just like, brrr, like up and over that rock. It's just like in a line. <laughs> it's almost like a coral farmer came by sowing the seeds. Yeah, in the row. <laughs> exactly. In the windrow, yeah. Well, I guess you wouldn't want to be like, behind yeah. another coral in relation to the current. It's right, because you get lost. That's exactly. They're sharing. The way they're shaped kind of reminds me how geese fly. Like in <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, cool. Who's that little vase sponge down there on the right? It's another little vase sponge, yeah. Ooh. What's this yellow guy? Right side, middle. Right side. Oh. Good eye. I'm going to say it's an encrusted sponge. Oh, it could be. Go ahead and zoom, please. Crusty. Hmm. Real crusty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. 
Look at the Atlanta view now. Oh. Wow. It's like there needs to be one of those do not enter signs. It's kind of spooky. <laughs> like it's a little spooky. Enter the, yeah. the haunted wood. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> enter at your own risk. Yeah. Looking at the Atlanta view and like that ring of light, uh -huh. how far away from Hercules is that? Like how much light? Well, Hercules is three meters long if you include the bumper bar and the cow catcher. Okay. So you can draw it yourself, get some scale there. So it's probably uh, three or four meters. Yeah. Oh. Around Herc. Yeah, mm -hmm. radius. It does feel like I'm in the center of a circle, though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. like well, I'm going to yeah. be sacrificed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really gives, like, alien and a cornfield vibe. Totally. i got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, check out that sunset, y'all. Nice. Uh, like someone's watching you, Trevor. It's like a crop circle, but a it's coral so circle. Yeah. I feel like someone's watching me. <laughs> <laughs> those are the scientists of Casa. I feel like <laughs> someone's <laughs> watching me. I know. Definitely on Nautilus Live, we are being watched. <laughs> How can people get involved in Scientists Ashore? Is it just specific people who are already involved in like the expedition planning from the beginning, or can scientists sign up to be a part of Scientists Ashore? Is scientists can sign up. It's not a, it's not an insider club. Okay. Uh, so you can go to nautiluslive.org and click on the tab for science, I think is what it says. <laughs> um, and Easy there are different sections of the website, um, depending on what you're interested in. But there should be a, a link in there um, for scientists to uh, express interest in expeditions that are coming up, uh, see a little synopsis of what's coming, um, and then submit a request to be part of the Scientist Ashore team. Uh, so what that involves is kind of explaining your expertise, what you're interested in, um, et cetera, and then that gets vetted. Um, yeah. uh, and if you ever have questions, you can also just reach out to the Nautilus Live team. Is that on a cruise by cruise or expedition by expedition basis? Typically, the expeditions are announced as a like a season. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll be, so on the Nautilus Live page somewhere, uh, there is a video recording of the expedition overview that was given at the beginning of this year where we walked through the higher level goals of each expedition and where they would be happening um, and so that's available anybody can watch it and it's not too late to sign up to be a scientist ashore for upcoming expeditions um, so you can watch that um, expedition overview recording see what's going on um, and on that same page is the link to submit your interest. That's yep. cool. Um, probably easiest if you want to just Google Nautilus Live Scientists Ashore program that should pull up the page, but if you also go to Science and Tech and then you go scroll down towards the bottom of the page um, and go to Scientists and then it says learn more and it'll take you to a Scientists Ashore program and it'll give you a little overview of what that means to be involved in Scientists Ashore who should register and sort of how to participate and then you can put in a request. So Beth, it looks like the ship's nearly settled out. Okay. And uh, I think now is about the time we can start looking for a rock. Yay. Okay, great. As well as a place to land. Yes, always part of the equation. Or even possibly a mid-water grab if we're able to get low enough. Okay. Um, do you mind coming off bottom a little bit and Going panning around so I can get a sense of where we might get the best... Options. There's surprisingly more sediment here than I was yeah, expecting. Again. Yeah, again. Mm -hmm. Yep. You what know, we actually saw area. that on the ridge top as well. Do you remember right before you left for dinner, we saw those waves of yeah, yeah, in right. the sediment? Yep. And it was right on top of the ridge. Hmm. I wonder if that place where the lasers are might be a good spot. Yeah. Might be because it just could within the limit. Be falling <laughs> off this thing, so that would be good. Roger. Yeah, let's try that first. Okay. 
Someone's wondering if the rocks have gotten lighter. I don't know if that's just the sediment. Yeah, I think they might hmm. be seeing the sediment. Yeah, and where we were earlier in the dive to some of the spots, like the rocks were scoured mm -hmm. to a shine. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, okay, this isn't as promising as I thought. No. <laughs> in terms of getting in there. Quite a tight fit. What if we move one parking spot over here and then check out over here? Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, basically. Side, side. Something floating in the Atlanta view. A little jelly, maybe. So we oh, could pick something up off, off. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. You yeah, I was wondering if maybe we can just. We're going to need to do some teamwork here. here, Ashton. All right. You've been practicing for this moment. <laughs> I'm going to fly the vehicle while you do the Chrysogorgia there in the really? center. I wonder if this one oh might gosh. be a good candidate. Oh, Roger. Okay, you can get the arm out. All right, prepare the cam first. The arm. It's not Cross super arm. easy because there's several corals Getting right around it, so maybe I should pick a different target. I'll get a little closer once you're ready, once you get it out in the Zeus view. Okay. Stephen, do you mind um, a slightly tighter zoom? Just so I can see the texture of the rocks a little bit more. Sure. Are we ready for that, Arby? Yes, go ahead. That's great. Thank you. Close those grippers. Let me know if you want me to come back out for the... Roger. Arm. Okay, and can you please circle the rock I'm going for again? Yeah, I'm still looking a little oh, bit. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm. Thanks. I'm sorry. About examining. That. Nope, you're good. I've got a one-track mind when I have the arm. <laughs> it's okay. You can come wide, Stephen. Thanks. Okay, so actually, my first target is this one right here. I'm not sure if it's loose, but it has a lovely bumpy texture. Understood. Okay. okay. Uh, can you get the arm just kind of in front of the view of the vehicle, but keep it tucked in? I can. And I'll start lining up that grab as best I can. Right. And then if that one's not good, the one right next to it is also a good candidate. So I'm circling both of them. More. Roger. Either in front or to the left of that bamboo whip. Right here. Yep. I'm circling it again so you see can that. see it. Thank you for that. Right behind the jaws. Just right. left of the jaws. Are you ready for me to try? Uh, yes. Okay. It's pretty far, so you're going to need to do a pretty good reach on that, but Get in there. Big reach. Oh. A floaty reach. Yeah, floaty reach. That seems pretty attached. Ooh. Okay. Maybe the yeah, one above it? It's not really budging. Yeah, try the one above it, the one that you're going for now. That's great. Okay. This one here that's right. Yes. Okay. Yep. You're pointing at it. Let me try that out. Let me get a little more extended here. Yeah, I can't get any closer. Okay. <laughs> Shrubbery in front of me. A little more reaching. It's loose. Did I get it? Yeah, you did. Yay. All right. I'm going right. to come up and away from the corals a little bit, get a little safer as you can bring that into camera view. All right. Do that. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah, oh, great teamwork, y'all. Nice work. Thanks, team. I can do okay. some Atlanting. Pause this and get reoriented a little bit. Okay. Did we get a still cam shot of this? Yep. Ooh, thank you. Ooh. Also, That's let's a get a glam here. shot of that rock. Yeah, we will. That's the one. Another tenuous grip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like going in there and grabbing it with your fingertips. <laughs> <laughs> A pair of tweezers. <laughs> Ooh. Beautiful. Can we Thank get lasers you. on the rock? Because I don't believe it's actually 40 you centimeters. Can bring it up a little bit above the the top of the screen. Okay. The lasers kind of disappear into the top of the screen there. There we go. 
up a little more. Oh, there you are. Perfect. Oh, there, there you go. go. Okay, that's a good <laughs> size. That's a good group. size. This is going to go, um, in once we take some pictures, some wide, we're going to put it in the forward bio box. Oh, we are. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Omega, forward, forward bio box, box Omega. That. Okay. You can start getting it close. All right. Oh. oh, no. Oh, we can get it. Sorry, family. All Sorry. good. It's right there. We can just get it again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Get the arm out of there, please. All right. Of all the things to learn from me, that's not one of them. <laughs> 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 all right. Anyone see where it is? Is it the black one? I believe it's that black one. I think it's this one right yeah, here. Right yeah, right there. That. Trevor, okay. I think I did something where I can't, t like, rotate the grippers. Yeah. Uh, is that that right button? Yeah, click that right button. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay. I'm engaged again, and... Now you've got rotate, yeah. Okay, thank you. And Beth, is it the one that's just at the bottom of the claw there? Right Top up here. Or, there yeah, yeah, thank you. It's gonna okay. be, so get the arm out of there, please. Okay. I gotta get in there first. What? If we can, if it's uh, too dicey with the corals, we can find another spot. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. There are so many rocks on this mountain. <laughs> Plenty of rocks in the sea. All right, you can try there. Okay. Coming back down. It's nestled right in with a small helimicorallium, but, uh, um, sorry, Chrysogorgia, but. Okay. Do what we can actually able to land there. Oh, great. Oh, I'm sorry, little. We might be getting an extra sample there. That's okay. Okay. And you can call for video zooms if you want them. Okay. Can we get a little bit of a zoom in on that, please? Thank you, that's perfect. Okay, guys. That's a good, that strong a hold, grab. isn't it? Yeah, great. All right. And let me see what kind of tucking I can do really fast. Yeah. Okay. Do as little damage as possible. Great grip on that one. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice grip. All right, so stand by. I'm just bringing the camera in first. Okay, okay. camera's in. All right. Did Do you, you guys need more pictures? Just a couple more. Okay. Okay, you can bring it down into the light pool. Okay. Center frame, and then Steve can zoom right in on it. There we go. Great. Little funny angle there, but. All right, happy there? Yep, great. Kay. Going wide, for please. Omega. Omega. Okay, gonna get nothing floating in here, I don't think. Nope, just a rock. And if it floats, <laughs> I will be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest discovery ever. Uh, stand by a sec. Okay, standing by. Get a little reoriented and think this one out. One three zero, one three zero. Okay, I think I'm ready for this. Be a tight fit in there. Yeah, we're going into we Omega. Omega, correct. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, there we go. I think All I'm right. ready now. Okay, make sure you spin those jaws before you open it. Good like one. so. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Keeps it away from all the unseen stuff. Okay, and in a little bit like that. It looks good there. Okay, we're gonna drop. Yep. Well. Whoa. Oh, oh that's, that's a big one. That's, that's a bigger big than I thought. Oh. Now, do you feel comfortable okay, nuzzling um, it a bit, or do you want me to do that? I think um, we should. Let me pull those claws in and see if I can nuzzle. Okay, I don't th don't mean stuff it down. I mean like kind of <laughs> rotate it axially. I don't okay. think stuffing will be wise, but I do think <laughs> it can 
rotate. I think it was thinner this way than it is this way. Okay. We can also put it in the starboard bio box if it's too big. Roger. Let me see. Trevor, I might actually hand this over to you. Roger that. Just because we are so close to cameras and things. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No problem. I think that still counts as the rock in the box, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice work, Yeah. Thank you. Definitely awesome. Counts. All right. Halted and index. double checked and good. Halted, double checked. Tenderly giving you the arm. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Tenderly. Make sure you put it uh, the other side up other so side the hall up. button doesn't hit stuff on the pass. Good call. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's a big rock. Yeah, yeah it is. Who Thick. picked this rock? <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, if we can twist it to get it in, that's fine, but it's also pretty darn big, so it is we, not can, small, yeah. we have a big bio box left yeah, on the side. It might be better to just put it there if it doesn't go in easily. Break my own rule and do the jaws oh, this way. Maybe it'll do it. There we go. What's that? Just like you planned it with the end over end flip? Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, 100%. All right, you can close the toolbox, please. Got it. Does it close? Uh, let me see. It will close. Oh, it'll yep, close, yeah. there we go. I think it fell in there pretty well. Yeah. So Annabelle will Thanks. prepare one Good of the five-gallon buckets for that one. Yep, that's what I was thinking. Beth, did you want a NISC in here, too? Yes. Oh, Roger. Which will also be a good eDNA sample for yeah. Meredith Everett's study, since we're surrounded by hemichorallium here. Mm -hmm. What Niskin is open? Uh, yeah, good question. That's three, four, Niskin five, three. Niskin three. I notice you folks don't like doing them out of order. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely hard. No. <laughs> that is. Hard no. That's usually my go-to, is just pick the easiest one to grab and then ignore the numerical order. There you, you got go. it. Fired. Nice. In a way, it's maybe nice that we're having to use the thrusters to keep where we are, nuzzled in here. Mm -hmm. it's kicking up a little material so mm -hmm. the niskin might get more than it would otherwise. Oh. More DNA jam. Yep. Also because we're right beside some Yes. Some corals. Some really pretty corals. Is that porch light still on? Negative. I just turned it off. Thank you. All okay, right. Okay, here we go. Let's get to okay. the top of the summit. All right. Summit. Bridge nav. Nice job, Ashton. Thank you so much. Can we move three Let's zero meters two. bearing three five zero, please? Thank you. It's super cool to have the opportunity to use that arm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sunset uh, is beckoning. Your progression. I know. Oh. I think we're going to catch the <laughs> end, I, I think. Oh, and you can see the bird flying. It's wow. too much, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. I swear, if that way, that well shark is back doing like flips under the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it right now. <laughs> doing flips. <laughs> I don't think that thing's ever flipped, but yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> Take a hump back too, though. Mm. <laughs> they want to come up anytime. Ah, oh, beautiful. Well, sh uh, sharks usually only come out of the water when they're trying to eat something. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they don't not much come up for airborne air. plankton, so I don't think they're going to be. <laughs> Steve. Yep. I don't know. It's dorsal fin was above the water earlier. It was a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It peaked. We were wondering where all the albatross went. Mm. Oh, they're back. There's like Are they dozens good? of them out but there. That, won't, that doesn't eat birds. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine a wood, but no, it, I was joking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I can. Really, really tiny birds. I mean, I get they might be scared of it still. Mm. I'm scared of it. Yeah. Have you ever swam with a whale shark? I think Beth has. Huh. I have. What? Did you swim with a whale shark? No, I didn't Megan. swim with them. No way. Megan has. Oh, Megan did. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've swam with a whale shark. I swam with one too. It comes out of murky yeah. water and it's right underneath you and it's this, you know, 20 foot long animal. I suppose it would be unsettling. Yeah, it would be unsettling. 
Terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. But still <laughs> want to do, do it. I would have to do it. <laughs> still though. do it, though. Oh, yeah. Because I know it's not going to eat me. Yeah, it's not going to hurt you. Yeah, yeah, logically, it's totally fine. But yeah. You're not but always still, using yeah. logic when you're in the water, right? Okay. Snorkeling is, is a very vulnerable position for a human being. It's you a know it. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's a filter feeder, but it also has like 300 teeth. Really? <laughs> yeah, something crazy. What does it do with the teeth? I thought it did. Maybe it has like a, it's more, it's like more like a baleen kind of comb. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So yeah, it has a ton of them, but I don't know that they're actually called teeth. All of my science, or marine science anyway, comes from Wikipedia, so <laughs> definitely <laughs> fact check me. Yeah. Yeah, none of us in this room are whale shark experts, yeah, so. Absolutely nope. not. Everything we're saying could use some fact checking. I can tell you it was magical seeing the whale shark. How's that? Yeah. That's accurate um, for sure. They're really amazing creatures, so majestic. It seems so gentle. Yeah. And curious. Yeah, it stayed around for a long time this morning. Shelby, where did you say the that there was a video posted of the whale shark? Um, on Nautilus Live Instagram. Um, it's not a post, but it's in their story. Okay. Um, along with some facts about whale sharks in the area. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Look at the birds flying around. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, is that the camera on the starboard side? It is. Okay. Sunset's getting earlier and earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we've traveled hundreds of miles <laughs> in this time zone. Totally. So. It seems like only a couple of days ago we caught the sunset on the back deck at the end of watch. And yeah, we did. And now it's we're not done for another 18 minutes. Well, I guess it's behind a cloud as well. Yeah. yeah. Bridge now. We might catch like the tail in. Going south and east. Look at this cool overhang. Can we move 30 oh, that's meters a cool bearing 340, please? Yeah, it really is. Thank you. I kind of want to hop over here just for the sure yeah i mean we're we're summiting so let's let's have a look yeah always seems that the hemicorallium fans are like in front of the chrysogorgia <laughs> in terms of the uh current direction Welcome back to Asako, one of our there. scientists ashore. We well, found a little bit of current, I think, or you're I pulling just, me. I just did a big move, yeah. You're pulling me. Oh. Can we get a partial I'm on this black coral? Out in front. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we can. Okay. It'll be bouncy. Auto heading. Not okay, go ahead, please. It. And um, we can stay here a while because we got to wait for the <laughs> ship to catch up. <laughs> I'm coming. Is this a black coral? I think so. so. I think it was Jeremy saying something about check the hold fast. Yep. Uh, I don't All think right. we can get a good shot uh, of that on this. Oh, I bet we can. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Well, since we have a moment, thank you. Can you come out a little bit, please, Steve? Actually, all the way out. I just want to see those corals to my right. Oh, yeah, we got room. Yeah, no problem. Okay, you can go back in. Thank you. Ooh. Those little polyps yeah. right yeah. by the base are hilarious. They're, They're super like extended. Cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't see that. But that's so interesting. Look at that little barnacle. Are you, what are you auto heading? I'm trying to no. come around. No, that's a whole path. path. Yeah. Are you going, did you go path. Path. Did a full loop? I yeah. continue the path I was on. My tether wraps are at point two, but my. Yeah, so you want to come to starboard and take that wrap out. All right. Come on. I think hands. you were facing this way and you went all around. I think you're right. I think I got swung and it mm -hmm. disoriented me. 
Do, do, do. Sorry about that, guys. It's okay. Kirk back in view. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? I'm just lost in a <laughs> big old dark ocean. <laughs> oh, there's a fish coming into frame in Herc's view. Yeah, Roger. Ooh. Ooh. A little wiggle. A fast one. We can do a wiggle zoom. <laughs> <laughs> little zoom. <laughs> oh, there bye. All right, now we're back. Now I there gotcha. he is. Came around <laughs> the right direction. The back fish flew out of frame, and then like I looked over to yellow. the sunset, and the bird went through, and it looked like it was like the fish coming through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone's wondering: Can the corals and sponges reorient themselves if the orientation of the deep sea currents change? Oh, okay. uh, it probably depends on the yeah. type of species. So yeah. we've seen some of these um, sponges that are on really long stalks, mm -hmm. and they might be more flexible. Um, and also some of these bamboo whips um, uh, and other types of corals that we've seen on previous dives, like the Iridogorgia, they're on long stalks. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably more amenable to changing the orientation. I don't think that these uh, hemichorallium fans that we're seeing in the, in the yeah. view here, right. um, I don't think that they can change their orientation. Yeah. You They're took your wrap rigid. out, but now I need to take my wrap out. So I'm going to go do that before watch change because not a great gift to leave people. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have about 10 meters left on this ship move. Do you want to just hang out at the summit for a little bit or keep moving? Um, what would make sense in terms of the handover of the shift? Like We could do another move before handover. Okay, yeah. Um, we might as well keep going and try to make it to that other summit by the end of the dive. So okay. uh, we can go ahead and put it in a ship's move, like north can northeast. Come up on Delta, please. Okay. Yeah, coming up. And you come wide on Atlanta Zoom, please. Bridge nav. Steve, you got that? Sorry, can say that again. Come wide on Atlanta. Roger. Bearing three, four, five. Nice. Just want to watch that tether. Found you. Oh, there it goes, straightening out. All right, lovely. Okay. Who sponge is that? Normal. Oh, yeah, over to the right? Normal ops. Kind of middle. Middle center? Yeah, we can have a partial zoom on that. Yeah, we got the round thing up the top left. Yep. Uh, let's oh. go for a zoom there, please. We can bring that zoom back in on Atalanta, too, if you'd like, Roger. Steve. Thanks. Oh, that's cool. Huh. This looks like that uh, elbow macaroni again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that one. And it's also growing on something that's no longer living. Well, the brown or parts can just be sedimented, but oh, the sponge okay. could still be alive underneath it. Cool. That I think that's that so you cool. read it. <laughs> There's like symmetry in the Atalanta and uh, Hercules shots. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It looks, looks like, like you're cool. in like a similar shape. Okay, we can come wide. Thanks. What's this one up here? This round dun, 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 bowl dun, soma, dun. maybe? Something. Ugh. No, I don't think that's a bowl of soma. So that look, the one we were looking at is probably a type of Eurydidae. Can you zoom in here, please, Steve? What's this guy? Not a bolosoma, but what is it? Oh, this Dead. one does not look healthy. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's doing too hot. No. No. Also looks like it might be a Eurydidae, but that's a little... Okay, thanks, come wide. Crab friend. Crab friend. Good crab real estate in here, though. Look at this. Yeah. This Ooh. is just cool in general. This cave there. That cave goes away. This is awesome terrain yeah. down here. I like cool. that. Yeah. Up here.
We can see the lasers, but the water is still very clear based on how beautiful that Atlanta shot is. It's super spotless. And so we're near the summit or not very quite? Near. Okay. Just about on it. Yeah, based on my sonar, I'd say another couple 20 meters or so. All right. And it's just like a, it's a pseudo summit. Yeah. This whole ridge feature is like a spine uh -huh. with little knobs along it. Um, so this is the highest point on this south, southern end. Gotcha. Also, Ashton, uh, folks viewing are giving you shout outs for your rock grab. Yay. Saying it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the moral support. <laughs> I'm still slow, but I'm a little bit faster with every rock. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> you can definitely see your progression. Okay. Big time. Look at all that sediment. In between. Yeah, yeah it's even got ripples. It's like a ghost mm -hmm. face. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Great ghost impression. <laughs> nice. Oh. It looks like the state puff marshmallow man. <laughs> Very good. Sure We've had the Kool-Aid monster. <laughs> 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 What's going cool. on here? Trevor had his Wheaties this morning. <laughs> 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 Trevor was going to the Kool-Aid. What was that Kool-Aid guy's name? I think it's just Mr. Kool-Aid. <laughs> I don't I know. know. I don't <laughs> no, no, I can't remember. That little trough in there. I'm surprised a bunch of things aren't down in there living. Well, it doesn't look like it's um, yeah. got much current. No. It's got a bunch of sediment in it. Yeah. He was just Come called Kool-Aid Man. Yeah. Kool-Aid Man. <laughs> I figured it was just like straight to the point. Wow, just really massive. How many Corallian yeah. fans there? Look at that little rock. Someone's wondering, is this a layer that's oriented north-south? It looks like a rock layer, and it's oriented in a certain way. So oh, it's the ridge line, I'd say. Yeah, yeah it's the, the ridge, ridge line, line yeah. It Sometimes I just have to pause and remind myself that this is all under us, like, right now. I know. It's not yeah. just... It's easy to lose that perspective, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It's so <laughs> surreal. It's yeah. so crazy. Another sediment area. It's kind of like sediment watch. up on this ridge. It's interesting. It's kind of like watching a nature show or a travel show where you're like, oh yeah, that place is real and I know it's Look out there. Look at those fans on the right. I know. Just like, whoosh, like all the way. Yeah, that's <laughs> wild. Wow. Incredible. That's Guys. amazing. Yeah. Earth Beautiful. Looks so tiny next to all of this. I know. Yeah. <laughs> huge fans. I'm a huge fan. We all are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big fan. You're a huge Big fan of the huge fans? <laughs> yeah. Got it. I had wow. to do it. Sorry. <laughs> Ashton, what were you saying about a nature show? Oh, I was just saying, it's kind of like when you're watching a nature show or travel show, and you're like, yeah, this place is real. I know it's real, but it's out there, like, somewhere far away. And here it's like, oh, nope, this isn't just some far away place we're exploring. It's right here, right now. Right underneath our sunset. It's only, what, 15, 15 2,000 meters yeah. yeah, away from us? 1912. Look at that Herc view. Yeah. I wonder if it ever... Make the yeah, you're technology. in a little canyon there in the uh, Argus mm -hmm. view. Really Atlanta really view. Here. Yeah. 
What was I saying? Yeah, oh. I want to push it. Stay still. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to fit through there without collateral damage, so I will not go any further, but it is wow. cool to get nestled in here a little bit. That is so cool. Can you zoom in on Atlanta, please? All right, we're coming up on the end of our watch. Yeah. The next shift is starting to come in. We'll be on the seafloor for another two, two and a half hours. Um, although we've made it to the end of our waypoint, we'll just keep exploring. Mm -hmm. uh, Gigantic. Then we'll be recovering. Uh, Herc will be on deck in about four hours. Yep. And then we'll be back in the water again, we hope, around 12 hours from now. Eight in the morning? Yep. Eight in the morning. Time. Yep. All right, you'll hear a little bit of commotion. We're switching over a little bit by a little bit. Keep sending in those questions. Oh, yeah. I'm getting the sense that everybody was watching the sunset together, and then they all came in the van at the same time. <laughs> You grabbing it or am I? All queued up. I like that one. I should bring a few more next time. Yeah, sorry, I floated up there. It was. What do you guys change? What do you what do you what do you variety? We gotta oh. we gotta sit down and change it. At least two things. This is how we roll. I say we stay here and look around. <laughs> Aloha, ahi, ahi, kako. Hi, everybody. Aloha. Hello. Aloha. Welcome to King George and the Coral Hunters. <laughs> 
and uh, we walked into a beautiful scene of all these corals here. It's quite amazing. Come down a bit for me. We didn't have to hunt too hard. And it's the kind of hemicorallium, and I was right. <laughs> Getting there. It's like... It's a hemicorallium hemorrhage. <laughs> I'm getting the vibe of like walking into an old house where there's like cobwebs everywhere, but instead of cobwebs everywhere, it's hemicorallium everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. It's pretty awesome. So kind of all uh, oriented different ways ish too. It like looks like it there's like a center circle right yeah, there on the upper one. There. Oh, a little is that a little shrimp? Yeah, it looks like it. Hello, Aww. little shrimp. Cute. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to remember the names of the shrimp on that movie that we were talking about the other day. Which <laughs> one? That was <laughs> Happy Feet, right? Yes. Okay. Happy Feet. We're in the real life Happy Feet here, and this <laughs> this shrimp is in for a great ride today. Just trying to find him, his true self. Oh, yeah. Our teams don't usually, um, they usually stay in your watch and you're not really allowed to trade watches. That, that, that was a question that I just wanted to address that came in online. Just getting all logged in here in the back row. Um, is the ship moving yet? Nope. Oh, uh, where, where are we meant to go? Yeah, so we are out of waypoints, so we're going to make a new one. Oh, all right. Nice. Um, and you can make it right on the crest of that next little uh, knoll, yeah. Roger. Um, mound. So um, I, I would like to sort of zigzag our way there and check out the east side and the west side of these cliffs. I do that. Some really big chrysogorges here, bottle brush coils. Sounds good. We are about. Uh, 360 meters away from the, the next crest. Okay. Thanks. Um, and we do have to recover, so let's calculate our ascent rate and our depth here, and we'll figure that out what time we have to leave. I think it'll be the same same depth, um, 19. So, 100 divided by 15. Yeah, a little longer than Two hours, yeah, something like that. So we have two hours to explore. Sounds good. Right. We still have plates to ditch as well. Looks like it. All three. Yeah. So yeah, we're still on the crest of Argonaut Seamount on the southern uh, southern portion of the seamount. Um, we've been exploring for oh the past ten hours or so, and we have about two hours to go before we have to start coming up uh, at a depth of about nineteen one thousand nine hundred and fourteen meters, and we're at the basically topographic high of this region, so we'll be dropping down to some deeper depths a little bit to check out some of the cliffs to the side. 
but sort of ending around the same depth. And then we're going to do some mapping later tonight and get our work our way to Nootka Seamount, which is pretty close by. And tomorrow's a really deep dive, 3,500 meters. Wow. And we're the delivery watch again, <laughs> unfortunately. 2.8 <laughs> hours of blue water. <laughs> the descenders and ascenders yep. assemble. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> back where we started. <laughs> But then after that, we should be on a couple of 24-hour uh, dives, so that'll get us off that cycle. Nice. Yeah. Dan, do you want to explore here for a little bit before the ship moves? Or do you want to call yeah, it? I'm just uh, kind of, yeah bringing the vehicle around to the north. Of the We're pretty full with samples. I think we have a pretty good sized spot on the starboard bio or another rock. Um, um, we can do one, one more rock for Val and one more, a few more slurps. We can, they said we can add one more into D. Okay. Uh, but no more E DNA. No more Niskins. Okay. Mm -mm. Sounds good. No more Niskins? We have three left, or are there plans for those? Um, we're kind of running low on um, those filters that we have for the, oh, the EDNA. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So the limit isn't on taking them, it's on processing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can uh, head towards the waypoint any old time. Birch, this is Nev. Can we get a ship move of 20 meters at 345, please? Uh, 20 meters at heading or bearing 345, please. All right. How's our audience doing? They're sending in uh, quite a bit of comments. I'm just kind of processing them right now. <laughs> I just I just updated the the post, and I might have to update it again as we slowly um, we've actually finished all our waypoints. So are we? We're yep. making our way to the top, and then we're going to go back down. Uh, we're just going to kind of zigzag our way up, up to the last waypoint. We just added another waypoint. So Sounds yeah, good. we've um, accomplished uh, most of the goals of the dive, and uh, this is all bonus time. Good job, everybody. A little ahead of, his, ahead of schedule. Hmm. How many meters to waypoint seven, Katachi? 360. For the vehicles. Okay. Interesting how the diversity's really changed quite a bit. Really just a couple species. And I slid down the hill away. Yeah. Sir. yeah. Definitely coral dominated. Yeah. You see any good uh, comments there, Kotachi? Yeah, I'm just reading through them. 
Whoever grabbed the mic just brought the open mic back. <laughs> oh, they want um, they want high pack. Yes, it's on, oh. I believe. The core sample did make it. There wasn't yeah, much mud, but a little bit. What was the last ship move, Katachi? Uh, we did 20 meters at bearing 345. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, finishing up now. <laughs> you can uh, punch another one in. Yes, sir. Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, another 20 meters at 345, please. Sure, I, I positioned it closer. Is this better? Yeah, quite okay. better. Yep, no problem. <laughs> Mostly hemichorellium, right? Yeah, although we have a Black coral here at the bottom of the screen. Bathy pathies, probably. What was the last rock sample? Was it a while ago or recently? Um. Dying Chrysogorgia here. No, it was about like a less than an hour ago. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's about a while. Okay. Still suffering from some poor video making it ashore, unfortunately. Sorry for that. They are working on it. We hope to have a resolution by tomorrow. Thanks for bearing with us. I don't believe the ROVs are affected by the tides, but are they affected? When we're operating in shallow water, they certainly aren't. There's mm. uh, the areas that we go in that we're doing that work close to shore that we, we have to wait for a slack tide, especially uh, around the fjords in BC there. Mm. We get maybe uh, an hour or two of dive time in some of the sites because the hmm. currents are so strong during the tides. I see, thank you. Okay, are we ready to introduce ourselves? Sure. Let's, let's do it. Um, let's share our favorite candy bar. You know, sounds good. Okay, I'll go first. <coughs> My name is Malanai Kanekuhibinui. 
I am the Science communica Communication Fellow or Kumoao slash Meahaimoolelo. My favorite candy bar, I think it's got to be Snickers. Fiona's looking at me with disgust. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite, quite the reaction, Fiona. I love it. <laughs> wow, look at how thick this is here. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Gasparo. I'm a part of the science team aboard the ship uh, and a graduate student in biology at Temple University. Uh, and my favorite candy bar is a uh, Heath bar. Ooh. I like I those. I've never heard of that. T tell me again. Really? I've never heard Heath? of that, too. Heath? Mm -hmm. Heath. Heath Bar? You've never heard of Heath Bar? Oh. No. Nope. What is that? <laughs> I That was part I of my favorite ice cream. I, I I like coffee Heath Bar Crunch. It's like a chocolate-covered toffee, I, guess, I want to say. I guess they haven't made it to the islands yet. <laughs> we'll have to come out and visit you guys. You're missing out. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Thank you, Ryan. I should have brought some. Do you remember your your Hawaiian name? Yeah, I'm the Akiakamai. Yeah, you the scientist. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Dwight. All right, I'm next in line here. Dwight Coleman in the back row, uh, the expedition leader, uh, marine geophysicist, marine geologist from University of Rhode Island. Um, I don't know, it's sort of a toss-up. I'll go with Almond Joy. Mm. And he, uh, Dwight is the Alaka'i and uh, Kanaka Epikema slash Akiakamai. I'm gonna have to practice that. Sorry, <laughs> Mama and I. No worries, all good. <coughs> Fiona, is that you next? Okay, I was just waiting for you. Um, hi everybody, I'm Fiona. I am move. the ocean science intern yep. here at Nautilus. And I am a student at the University of Guam and I'm also a coral restoration and marine monitoring technician. Um, my favorite chocolate bar would probably be Hershey's. Paul? Wait, so just a straight Hershey's bar? Yeah, just straight <laughs> Hershey's. <laughs> All right, so my name is Paul. Um, I'm one of the ROV pilots for Atalanta, which is a Pailaka Mukulu'u Kia Awaya. And uh, one of my favorite candy bars would be uh, like the Cookies and Cream Hershey bar. It's kind of a guilty pleasure because it's just like all sugar, white chocolate, but uh, that's definitely up there. That's a good call. Good job on saying your name, I your know. your position yeah. name. <laughs> oh, 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 I, I see, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's next in the front row? I'll go. Uh, I'm sitting off to the right. My name's Katachi. I'm the navigator, or Ho'o Kele. Um, my favorite candy, I like a good gummy. Um, you guys know the brand Albanese? Uh, they're like very bougie candy. I don't know. <laughs> I was eating Haribo's and I was perfectly happy. And uh, one day one of my friends said, you don't, you don't know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, these are perfectly good. Anyway, she got me um, a bag of these Albanese gummy bears, and they were significantly better. <laughs> so, yeah, those are good. Awesome. Thank you, Kodachi. Do you still enjoy the Haribos? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I have, like, uh, really, really low standards. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I don't know how to say this. Like I, I, I appreciate things that are really good, but the, um, the, the bar is pretty low. <laughs> Not too picky. Dan and Jeff. 
Oh, Diane yeah. operating the Hercules, sitting in the Herc chair. Uh, Butterfingers, probably my favorite candy bar at the moment. Yeah. That was one of my other choices, Butterfinger. Awesome, and Dan is, the, uh, is a um, Pailaka Mokulu Ukea Awaya also. Wow. I always flash to Bart Simpson when everybody says Butterfingers. <laughs> I'm Jeff, the video guy, he's on the left. Um, if, if we're going with Hitachi as far, or Hitachi's, um, uh, you know, a good three musketeers, just, <laughs> but lately, uh, I was going through the Seattle airport and there's Seattle chocolates and they have a little kiosk there. And so I've gotten hooked on the high end Seattle chocolate, whatever bars, so. Nice. Awesome, and uh, Jeff is the Kanaka Paiwikio. Mahalo. <clears throat> Aloha mai kako. Uh, my name is Ho'oipo Berdaman. I am from the island of Hawaii, and I am the cultural liaison on this little trip on our excursion. Um, and my favorite candy bar has to be Twix. Mm. Yeah, that's it. A good one. Don't we get candy bars now for a reward for? <laughs> 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 I think we earned it. At what point do we pull out the candy? <laughs> <laughs> There's no food that we goes have to on. wait at least an hour. There's no food in the van. Yeah, Jeff? That's right. No no food in the van. No food in the van. The candy bars aren't really food, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was only no powdered sugar croissants in the van. Sorry <laughs> very specific. Well, as, as the, the department that's... I don't know how this happened, but the department that's responsible for cleaning the van, so I'm not sure... Why, why video has to clean the vans, but at the end of every exhibition we do. And so, we can always tell when people have been eating peanuts or popcorn or powdered donuts or... Now I'm craving powdered donuts. I know, that sounds really good. <laughs> Dan, do you want to go um, on either side of the ridge? Sure. All right. I think it was. I think we're on the we're on the uh, east side now. <laughs> I think it was a cook that we had last year. Do you want to go further down east or cut to the west? Uh, this seems like a good good bearing here. We'll All right. Run up the Is hill. the ship still moving? No, we just finished. So I'll call in the next one. Bridge. This is Nav. Can we please move the ship 20 meters at bearing 345? Yeah, I'm, I have no feathers here. It's so Oops. dense that it seems like no matter which way we go, we'll, unless we're looking for some specific bathing. Well, just to see see what see if it's different on the sort of slope or. Not sure it's really a cliff like we've seen before, but a steeper slope anyway. So you want to run down or up or which? Well, just looking at the high pack map, it's uh, either either side of this ridge is uh, would be good to explore. Yeah, I think we're basically on the west side there, aren't we? I can't see uh, that closely on the high pack. Yeah, map. you are, but the ship is kind of bringing you the other to the other side. Um, no? Oh no, you went three, four, five. Yeah, we're going three, four, five. And it's a little steeper on the west side too, so yeah, let's keep it in that direction. Oh, we'll eventually jump over to the other side. Ooh. Oh man, someone in the comments uh, is a fan of Japanese gummies. That's what's up.
Maybe you can answer that first question, Kotachi. What, what was that? Oh, first question. Where? Up in the top. Up in the top. Oh, why do you call the room the van? Um, I feel like that's a Jeff question. Uh, are, is that like a moniker for um, Dwight, shipping containers? Dwight answered it, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other night. Yeah, it's a, they're 20 foot shipping containers and it's slang <laughs> for a shipping container. We always called them vans. They sort of remind you of a um, what's on the back of a tractor trailer truck. Uh, shipping container van. Control van is just what they've always been called. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, one of those things that yeah, this seems to stick. Yep. Although it would be nice to rip all this stuff out of here and take over the data lab. Mm -hmm. Imagine the forward wall of the data lab just covered with monitors. <laughs> I don't know. You have a lot of a lot more people seasick. <laughs> and the data lab. Yeah. Although I guess when we dive, the conditions are not bad. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking front row and the and the data lab could be like everyone in this room. Not sure it's big enough. Maybe. Sally Ride has a monitor wall. It's got 26, 20, and yeah, some huge number of monitors on it. They're not doing a lot of dives yet though, are they? The ride? Dives, yeah. Uh, no, they don't have an ROV. Well, they oh. have a, they have the Trident. It's a small ROV, kind of like uh, similar to the University of Hawaii vehicle. Got it. Only it's actually a, like a baby brother of that one. Bridge, this is Nav. Another 20 meters of bearing 345, please. Dan, did you say the ride? You mean the Scripps ship? Yeah, the yeah. Sally ride. Yeah, they do have a, I think it's identical to the University of Hawaii ROV. It's the same manufacturer anyway. Yeah, do it. I noticed I was looking around. Um, it's it's uh, smaller, a lot smaller. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. No, oh, yeah. I uh, like, was doing some work down at Scripps and was poking around and looked at like photos from the ship and saw you on the back deck or something. Really? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Dan was here. I had a real embarrassing moment on that. They have these, uh, I don't know, they're rather expensive uh, carbon fiber boat poles. Mm. And we were launching the vehicle and that kind of the technique is to throw the pole back and it lands on the deck. And I did a really lame throw and it like bounced twice on the rail, went over the side. Oh, no. <laughs> the director was standing right there. <laughs> shaking his head. But I was never invited back after that. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take a look over here at this coral? I feel like if they're not ready to lose a uh, pole or two, then they're probably not ready for a lot of ROV work. He's actually a really nice guy. Um, yeah. He's been there forever. Bruce Applegate? Uh, I think it was Woody who was out. Oh, Woody, yeah. yeah. The senior tech. Res tech. Oh, yeah, maybe. But I can't remember. It's been a while ago now. It's like maybe a primnoid with a bunch of anemones on it. I need to ping those guys and see if they're going out lately. I know Jason's been on there a couple times. Want to push in on that one, Jeff? Oh, I can't get much closer here without... Anemones? Oh. Yeah, lots That's of them. not sea stars. It's a little different. Wow. Yeah. It's really the only one.
one of the species I'm like amongst like all the hemicorallium and chrysogorgia. Right. This is a what? It looks like a primnoa to me, although it could be a bamboo. Oh, and no, it's a bamboo. And are those... See some banding, I think, in the skeleton. Anemones growing on it? Yes. I was backing up while you oh. were zooming in. Yep. <laughs> no, the uh, phase A, B. Argus losing power. The Argus has a hard ground fault. Great. On both of them. Let's see. Uh, that's not good. Something you had to turn off? No, there's a... Uh, so we can turn off there, and that's the, the main juice going in. Hmm. Um, all the bottle stuff's okay. No leak, humidity. no leak. Yeah, temperature and humidity are fine. Let's buy the squid cable. Go ahead, lunch. Um, is that Trevor yeah, calling yeah. up? Yeah, uh, do you guys want him here? Yes. All right, yep. yep. I knew there was a reason we put that graphical user interface up on that. Yep. <laughs> Dwight, were you ever on an um, expedition um, near Vancouver? Uh, no. Nope. Roger. I was not. Uh, well, I did come in. Uh, I guess I was. Um, but it was near Victoria. Mm. So it's on Va Vancouver Island, but not really near Vancouver, the city. Mm. And uh, I think it was right before a ONC, uh, Ocean Networks Canada trip. I, I think I finished a leg there. Hmm. Eight, seven or eight, I don't know, five or six years ago. Mm. Interesting. I came onto the Nautilus for a day around that time. Oh, at really? the very last day of the cruise. In Victoria? In Victoria. Yeah. I wonder if there was that expedition. It could be, yeah. Does the Ocean Exploration Trust have any other vessels? Or just this one and it travels to different spots? Just this one. Um, we do have some mobile system assets, so we can charter other ships and use our technology on the other ships. Mm. But um, we don't do that frequently. Um, I did a project with OET last year in the Great Lakes, and we were at Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary in Lake Huron. And um, we partnered with the University of New Hampshire, and we had their ASV there, and we were doing mapping uh, for the sanctuary and looking for shipwrecks. And then we um, charted, we were able to get ship time on a Coast Guard cutter. And uh, we charted a uh, small ROV from the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. And so OET does do other projects uh, off the Nautilus. What happened? Uh, that's right. Trevor's the lead. He picks it. He's out. We continue on. Roger. Uh, Strangely enough, it's our wounded thruster that was on for some reason, causing the uh, hard ground fault. So it's a, a breadcrumb for us for troubleshooting for later, but doesn't affect the dive. Do you teach courses at your university, Dwight? No, I don't. Nope. Uh, just research and uh, direct a lab. So I'm the director of the Inner Space Center, which is the shore-based facility that supports a lot of the ships of exploration. And uh, we handle all the telepresence aspects of the projects and satellite telecommunication and data management and remote participation and networking and teleengineering. So we have a staff that works there supporting the Okeanos Explorer and the Nautilus and some other ships. Yep, 
Confirm it. Bridge, this is Nev. Can we get 20 meters uh, bearing 345 again, please? Do those other ships also go through the Inner Space Center? Uh, yep, uh, with with data, with live feeds and, and data systems. So we have a partnership with NOAA and uh, GFOE, the Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration. They have a bunch of um, servers in the center that handle data and telepresence systems. And um, their satellite network comes through uh, Inner Space Center as well, um, just like Nautilus. I did not know that. Yep. We did change change the um, details of the Nautilus network this year, though. We're using a different satellite service provider, and we're not terminating a tunnel at ISC anymore. It terminates in New York City, and we um, uh, get at, get a access to all the feeds through New York, and that's. Um, saving us some money and uh, helping us be a little more efficient in the way we get to the cloud and uh, some other some other things that we're doing that's innovative. The Okeano still terminates their network at the ISC. They have dedicated fiber uh, from the air station right into the, our building. And like, one reason why the uh, both ships have University of Rhode Island phone numbers, the 401874 um, uh, phone numbers on both ships are uh, University of Rhode Island extensions. Um, and the network is structured such that it's basically an extension of URI's campus. So um, from sort of a network space, it, it, it's like the ships are another building on campus. branch of the network. Endeavor kind of operates that way too, and we're getting a new ship uh, in about a year and a half. The uh, Narragansett Dawn, it's one of the RCRVs. And we're also working with Oregon State on their RCRV and uh, University of Southern Mississippi for theirs as well. So we'll be supporting all three of those ships. Oh, wow. And then... Um, Have you heard any uh, rumors about an, an ROV for the OSU? Have not, no. I know that uh, Woods Hole is, um, and through the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, um, have have some ideas on the drawing board. Not sure if OSU is working on something in particular. Yeah, they were at one time years ago. And that kind of fizzled out. Not sure, whatever happened there. There's a lot of new ships being built. When I go home in a few weeks, I'll be um, hosting a big group from no other designing uh, six new NOAA ships for fisheries and hy hydrographic work, and one to replace the Okeanos Explorer. The Coast Guard's building new icebreakers for polar research, and the um, RCRVs are being built, and there's a, I'm invited to a, participate in a workshop for um, specking some systems on the new drill ship, so they're gonna replace the Joides resolution in a few years too, so. Lots of new ships being built, and they all want high bandwidth communication systems and telepresence. So it's good for business. Uh -huh. Are a lot of these ships replacements, or is there just an increase in total ocean exploration now? Um, they're mostly replacements, I'd say. Um, you know, the Coast Guard ships have a requirement to service the polar regions, and um, train Coast Guard cadets and operate as Coast Guard support for these areas, uh, but they're also equipped for science. Mm -hmm. The drill ship is really just completely dedicated to science. Um, the NOAA ships, you know, are part of the service agencies of NOAA for hydrographic survey yeah. and fisheries, mostly. 
RCRV class of ships will be part of UNOL system, so they're NSF owned and uh, operated by different universities. They're uh, they're smaller the RCRVs, aren't they? They are. They're smaller than the astronaut class. There, the Ride and the Armstrong. Um, a little bigger than the current intermediates, which was the uh, Endeavour, the Oceanus, and the. Um, uh, I forgot the third one. Uh, and um, yeah, so Endeavour now is, I think, 180 feet, and this, these new ships will be 199 feet long. So not not quite as big as Nautilus. Looking at a macro urid fish here, I think Coryphenoides. One we've been seeing quite regularly on this expedition. I've never seen any of these guys eat. Must eat like every 10 years or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Snoots would like this one. <laughs> Are there any mapped caves in this area? Have we ever have have the ROVs ever explored caves at all? Dr. Ballard wants to go caving with her uh -huh. guys. A little bit off Southern California. Mm -hmm. Not really large caves that you would think of like off Mexico, but um, small ones. I know as well some of the interest is in shallow water caves, potentially places that you know humans might have lived or um, been involved with before uh, water level rise to long time ago um, but generally putting an ROV a tethered ROV especially a big one like this into a cave is a uh, really big challenge and <laughs> quite dangerous so something that we would typically avoid yeah uh, but there's definitely people and groups focused on how to make underwater ROVs or AUVs <laughs> for you know cave exploration so It'd be really hard if you dusted it up. You wouldn't have anywhere to run away for clear water. You'd have to wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a no current situation. Reminds me of my dog when he's staring at the light on the floor. Stands <laughs> 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 there and looks at the spot on the floor. Huh. Just needed to chase the lasers around. Yeah, have fish ever chased them like cats do? <laughs> the um, Humboldt squid really chase them. They're quite aggressive, and they'll um, when the dot hits a rock, they'll uh, grab the rock. Like when the laser's shining on the rock, and they're really fast, and they'll grab the rock and, and throw it in disgust because it's not a piece of food. Quite <laughs> 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 hilarious. But. Well, it's hilarious at first. After a while, it gets annoying because they're it. They're big and they're in your face. How big? Uh, there's some of the biggest squid I've seen around. Uh, they're, I don't know, wow. a couple of feet long, maybe. Good eating. But, uh, there was a few years there in the Pacific Northwest. They were really, they were all over the place. Super aggressive. They would like um, you know, come into divers and rip their mask off. Oh. And they would, yeah, they would encircle the boat. Just <laughs> amazing numbers. They'd travel in groups too? Yeah, big, big schools of them. Jeez. Speaking of squid, that's actually what those fish we were just looking at tend to eat, um, especially when they're small, and then as they get larger, 
shrimp and fish increasing when we become a part of their diet from reading. So I assume they go feed in the water column and then sort of hang out down here. That's why we don't see them. They can actually move much. fast enough to get a shrimp? I guess so. Oh. Probably small it's ones. A crab right there. Crab? Where do you see a crab? A little sponge down there, too. Oh, I see the crab now. Oh, you don't see it? Right there. Can you circle it so he can see it? There. You see the crab? I don't is. see it. Good eye, Katachi. Kotachi's been known for having a good eye on our watch. He sees all the things that everybody uh, else doesn't really see. Zoom in on the crab? I, don't, I can't really <coughs> land here, but I can. How do I get to that file? Um, oh, that's good, thanks. Oh, I'm down. That, that crab has really long legs. Yeah, it's a type of lithoted crab, which are the king crab group. A what crab? Hey, Dwight, I have a ship question for you. Lithoted? Oh, uh, sure. Um, how many shipyards are there in, uh, in the U.S.? And oh do boy. these um, science ships, are they all commissioned? Uh, are they all built in the same shipyard? Uh, no, it depends. Um, you know, basically, uh, it goes out to bid, and they select the shipyard uh, after reviewing the bids. So I think the... Most recent ones built were the uh, Sally Ride and the Neil Armstrong were both built in the sh same shipyard, uh, I believe, in Washington State. Um, I see. The uh, three RCRVs are being built in Homa, Louisiana. Right, right. And um, Homa. the Seculiac might be the w next recent one. That was uh, actually built in Wisconsin in the Great Lakes. I see. Oh, in the Great Lakes. Wow. Yeah. Wait, how... How do they, uh... Yeah, they can connect out through the canals. Oh, okay, okay. Or in the St. Lawrence Seaway. Okay. <laughs> I was yep. picturing all sorts of... <laughs> Landlocked. <laughs> Fly it out. Yeah, yeah C-130. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um. No, it can, get, it can get in there. So if, uh, if you have the same class of ships, would all of those typically be contracted to the same shipyard? Yeah, right. that's usually the case, yeah. This crab looks very busy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A lot of plankton to eat. But usually ships try to choose a shipyard close to their home port. Um, you know, we saw the Western Flyer, which is the University of Hawaii's ship, and it was in a shipyard right there in Honolulu. Um, Nautilus goes to um, Ensenada a lot. Uh, I think that, no, where are they? Uh, the top one. Yeah, c somewhere close to L.A. and uh, in Mexico. Never mind, yeah, about I don't 60 know. Miles. Yeah. That's, that's like, uh, yeah, no, Baja, California. Yeah. About 60 miles nautically from San Diego. Yeah. An hour's ride, an hour or two. Endeavor so. always goes up to Sonesco, which is at Quonset Point in Rhode Island. So, you know, you still have to go out to bid for major work. Like sometimes the Woods Hole ships are down in Charleston, South Carolina, for example. Um, but they try to choose ones that are close close to home, so they don't have to travel so far. Gotcha. Actually, the Atlantis did their refit in uh, in um, San Francisco Bay, and, uh, across from San Francisco there, Alameda. Oh, my Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> All the big uh, UNOS global class ships, the um, Roger Ravel, the Tommy Thompson, and the Atlantis, were all, all went through their midlife refits in the last couple of years. 
So uh, they'll get another 20, 20 years or so, out of 15, 20 years out of those ships. Midlife refits. Midlife refit, yeah. Basically strip everything out and rebuild it. <laughs> wow. Most of it, anyway. What time do we figure we have to come up on them? We have another hour. Another hour. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not the answer you wanted to hear? <laughs> What's our, uh, uh, there was a voice in our ear going, right now, right now. His, <laughs> His Majesty. <clears throat> We're going to switch, switch seats in the front row here. We have one more rock to get, Paul. <laughs> Is it a, a, it's one for Val, yeah? Yes. The uncooked potato. <laughs> yes. I like this uh, midlife refit phrase. I think I'm going <laughs> to. We yeah. all need those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could justify some uh, big expense when we're in our 40s. It's just my. Yeah, it's a nice refit. way of putting midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> we were all thinking it. Ryan's the one who said it. <laughs> Really, you're supposed to have those in your 40s? Oh, I don't know. Man, I missed out. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> you know, you can have more than one too. I'm sure. That's what friends are for—to come and save you during those times and put in a refit. <laughs> you'll probably have to. You'll probably have to turn that volume way up. I had to turn it way down over yeah, here. Yeah, I just did. We just did a little pilot change in the front row here. Paul hasn't put his microphone back in front of his mouth. <laughs> a little bit closer. Hey, that's good. All right. We are about halfway to this bonus waypoint, right? Yep. Yeah. Can we try to scoot over to the? to the western side a little more and check sure. out the slope. Can do. I think we're pretty pretty well characterized the kind of crest of this ridge with all these uh, rocks and, and animals here. What's the distance, Katachi? 200 meters. A few yeah. more whip corals here. Bridge, this is Nav. Uh, can we move the ship 20 meters north, please? Okay, copy. Keep an eye on his uh, speed overground. Yeah, I saw it's uh, creeping up. Cooking right now. We have a little DP issue. So you want to uh, get out in front of uh, Atlanta there? Come yeah, down. I guess a little bit more to the north. Yes, sir. You're all right. You don't have to go too fast, but. Definitely want to be to the north. Or um, come under the ship and wait. Don't, don't go forward more, you're starting to drag. the uh, move to come a little bit more to the west? Uh, he'll call us back when he gets things under control up there. 
Yeah, we can either go, um, like, I was going to go north, because that kind of brings us towards there anyway, mm. or we can go more into the west. Or east. East or Just uh, stay kind of close to Atlanta for now, Paul. Right. No, I can hear you. Until uh, George calls us back. Jeez. Find something to look at around here. enough his um what I was concerned about his course over ground was going that way and then this way so we, if, if it looks like it's gonna take off for quite a while you can get out in front and uh, keep exploring but if it's zigging and zagging we want to be under and then we can decide which way to go but it looks like the ship's kind of moving due west right now, so... Yeah, it is picking up to the west again. Well, I'd say you want to go that way. <laughs> Perfect. Go west, young man. Well, that's where we want to go anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's like we planned it that way. <laughs> Some of our best exploration has been uh, live boating. <laughs> Change uh, Atlanta heading due west. Last year during ONC, um, Ian wouldn't let us, we wanted to go see uh, Dudley. We were like really close, like within 10 minutes. Can we get a quick zoom on this? And uh, Ian. Ian and Steve always have this kind of uh, thing about, you know, science. It's an engineering cruise, right? So we're out there to do engineering on the uh, Cable Observatory. But we also do some science while we're out there. But the priority is always engineering. So science kind of has to take a back seat. Anyways, they were going back and forth about whether we went to see Dudley or not. We didn't really, we didn't want to spare the time. But awesome. then, uh, Damn it. The DP took a holiday, and and as just as it happens, it drifted right over to Dudley. <laughs> so we get this beautiful view of going up one side of Dudley and down the other at about like half a knot. And then uh, just I don't know, 50 meters on the other side, they got everything under control, and then we got to go back over it again. <laughs> we actually got to take some uh, temperature readings, really brief. We couldn't do any water samples, but. Got some good images and a few temperature readings. What is the Dudley? Is that uh, one of the vents? It's, yeah, one of the big, big, big structures in the Endeavor vent field. Cool. It happens to be a little bit kind of uh, southeast of uh, where we were putting instruments down. Looks like north is your new direction. Yep. Wind's only blowing five knots, so it's probably not the wind that's causing so them to lose DP. You need to come around to the north, Paul, here. Just really going fast to the west. Another little Wally view. I like to think that it's like a Wally view of Atalanta looking down at her. That is a cool shot. It is. All the coral look like little manamanas that are sticking out of the ground. Paul's got his hot rod boots on now. <laughs> Half job, a knot. Paul. Three quarters of a knot. George is getting us to this waypoint. <laughs> yeah, we're flying. I'm 
back uh, back west again, maybe. If we stay in the Atlanta box there on the video, yeah. we'll be we'll be good. Some huge corals here. That looks like a little shiny rock right in the middle of all those. Yeah. Uh, Hemicorallia, man. I don't want to call it a primnoid because it's not a primnoid. What is it? Chrysogorgia. Hemicorallia. And then the other one's Chrysogorgia. Chrysogorgia. I heard I heard a whisper from. <laughs> yeah, where'd that come from? I think it was from Fiona. <laughs> oh, Epo. No, that was not me. <laughs> it wasn't you. <laughs> I didn't talk this whole time. <laughs> Chrysogorgia. I didn't want to say it too loud. I didn't. I didn't think. I thought I was wrong. <laughs> I think Epo's last words were Twizzler, or not Twiz, uh, Twix, Twix, <laughs> Twix, wrong T. It looks like a little sea anemone in the middle of those coral there. Yeah, yeah, sure Let's is. Let's get a uh, little zoom here. It's a beautiful thing about science, Fiona. If you're wrong, you have to just be really convincing. <laughs> it is science, right? There's no. Oh that yeah. is true. Nothing wrong with being wrong. Uh, it's got to start out where it could be, it looks like. So awesome, thank you. It's okay to be r incorrect. Thank you, Dwight. We're trying. That, that helps to provide a very awesome learning environment. Yeah. Yes. Shrimp. Northeast now. Wow. Just so dense. Yeah, really. These Chrysler Gorges going really tall, too. I actually think the DP is writing in cursive what George's favorite candy bar is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and keep your speed down under half a knot, right? Copy that. Can do, Kotachi. You, you push that button. Where do I see my speed? Speed over ground on the nav screen. Under piloting. Is that the ship speed over ground? No. That's oh. your course speed over ground. Mm. Right, on, right here on your nav screen, Paul. Oh, yeah. Got it. So if you go faster than that, a lot of people are going to review this video many times. So if you go slower, they can. Yeah, if your speed is varying, if your speed's more constant, if they're, you know, trying to count these animals or rocks yeah. or whatever during the video reviews, they can. What is that yellow little thing there? Why Where? is that? Sorry? I'm, I'm not watching it. I don't know. Oh. Is it still in frame? Mm. I did see. No. Go ahead. It's okay. Hmm. Roger. Take a look at some of the yellow stuff encrusting on some of these rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Is the ship is holding position right now? Yep. Kotachi, are you gonna ask George what his favorite candy bar is? Yeah, I can. Uh, okay. George, what's can your favorite candy here? bar? Okay. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> We're not listening. You gotta tell us what he said. He said, I don't need sugar. <laughs> Potentially encrusting sponge. Awesome. Right. Thanks.
That's what I tell. Thanks. Where is this computer getting its time? Uh, local time. Wow. Local time. That's not right. Are we ready for a westward move? I don't know. That's right. I just uh, yeah. Let's do control shift. West. Call it. That's what appears there. Northwest. Northwest. Bridge. This is Nav. Can we go 20 meters, uh, bearing 310, please? Just gonna strip the gauges real quick, Paul. Yeah. Go for it. I feel like two very prominent characteristics, or maybe now three, because when we started our watch, there were a lot of those primnoid carls, mm -hmm. the white ones, right? And then now there's just so much um, hemicorallian, and yeah. then the really huge boulders that were like almost the size of a building. Yeah. Yeah, the diversity is uh, certainly a little bit lower on this knoll or top of the feature here, but really high density and large, seemingly long-lived corals. Although right when you say that, we see a primnoid fan down there. Mm. So it looks like we're kind of coming to this uh, edge of this ridge here, like off to the side. Cool. Brian, were you watching when the other watches were on? A little bit here and there. Are there any like major characteristics that were um, prominent on their watches compared to what we're looking at? Um, I'm a little biased, but I think we saw some of the most interesting stuff on our watch earlier today. Um, mm. The rest of it sort of, for the most part, you know, I didn't see everything, but mm. it's a lot of hemicorallium, a lot of chrysogorges, um, some primnoids. We made it to the edge. I'm on the edge. Cliff jumpers. Once again. Look at those corals that are kind of like, hey, like bent. Oh yeah. Current's really hitting them. Tether excursion limit reached. Roger that. Is the ship still moving over in that direction a little bit? Yep. Yeah. Are these crazy couple, gorgeous? A couple meters left. Uh, five meters left. Let's do another move in the same direction. Yeah. Bridge, this is Nev. Another 20 meters at bearing 310, please. Kotaji, what's, oh. what's, oh, sorry, go on. Then after that, hopefully just straight north. Yeah, look at look at them all. Wow. Yeah, it's really really dense. Sponges, not very many sponges to be seen. No, no, it's only fans. <laughs> there might be some sponges in there. Kind of where the lasers are. Could be wrong though. Probably wrong. How's the current here? Uh, kind of at you, coming at you. Yeah, you can see it's kind of going um, either at us or from west to east. Yeah. Kind of up the ridge. Doesn't feel crazy, though. I 
think I see a sponge. Yeah, is down that there? a sponge hiding in there? It's always yeah. bright when we say something. That's what I was saying right at the lasers. Oh, cool. Good eye. That's about as far as my identification goes is sponge or coral. <laughs> And that's all be you need to know because you are at the steering wheel of the most important ROV on the ship. I've got uh, Crinoid and Victor Gorge are the purple ones now too, right? Mm. Good job. And, and you are practicing your Hawaiian language name of your title. A lot of things to learn. Mm -hmm. I don't believe the ROVs are equipped with microphones, but um, or sound sensing equipment. But correct me if I'm wrong. They have been in the past. They're not currently. We, we actually are having this discussion over breakfast. Mm. No, they don't. Roger. Thank you. Do we take we a want a zoom on? Yeah, let's take a zoom of it. Maybe a polyopagon, that's what I'm thinking. Polyopagon. Mm -hmm. Wow. No yeah. difference. Looks, looks like a foray, maybe. Hard to tell. why how why they're called sponge mm -hmm. that's a good question cool close-up awesome thank yeah. you so I I know it's not as dramatic with the Atlantolites on, but I turn them on so we can see the tether. Yeah, yeah. Can't see it when it's uh, right in the dark. Mm. That's a good awareness for Paul to. After a while, you'll know what it's doing. You won't have to look at Which it all the time. But Another twenty meters at three one zero, please. Uh, do we want to? I think we might want to just go. Do we want to kind of follow this contour or go straight north? Oh, um, I thought it looked pretty interesting over here. So one more move and then we can go up. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, bring uh, Atlanta heading around to. What do you want it setting up? Um, maybe three thirty. Three three zero. Got it. Ryan, how come right some here? of that sponge is like a brown, not like fully white? Yeah, those are parts of it were uh, so dead or dying. Yeah. Oh, poor sponge. That's pretty normal for a sponge. Okay. Little fish in view. Two of them. Two. This uh, Koifenoides. Good job, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I was uh, saying it out loud this time. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Little fish. Yeah, I don't think it is Koifenoides, but. Aww. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I really didn't want to burst a bubble. <laughs> at at least sure? you tried. So you tried. I yeah. tried. That's all that matters. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Sorry, was I talking when you said the kind of fish it was? I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's you just like wanted to rain on my parade, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Let's give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to miss current. Just don't type it in the log. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it an 
eel-like fish or a fish-like eel? <laughs> oh, no, they kind of down. all do that, huh? Like eels. Herc's flying off the nav screen. They do the the little oh, yeah, yeah the velo. You got us yeah. back in view. <laughs> <No>. That's <laughs> so funny. Okay. <laughs> Should be go to <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Another boulder absolutely covered in these. Yeah. Hemicorallian. Nice. You're a pro. I, I was helping to finish Paul's sentence. Another boulder covered in these dot 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 hemicorallian. <laughs> Another boulder, another day. Yes, oh, we Kotachi. got some upside down ones. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, interesting. I think we, we could, if we stay on this heading, we'll see a lot more of this stuff. And we have plenty of time, too. We still are on the lookout for a rock for Val, too, yeah? Correct, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have about 40 minutes, I think. So let's factor that in 10 minutes to, to five minutes to grab a sample. Uh, is this a good area for that? I was going to wait till we got up to the top of the mound, but it doesn't really matter too much. I'll, let's just keep our eyes open for something potato shaped and uncooked. Right? You know, uncooked uncooked potato. Uncooked, uncooked potato. Rather than a raw potato. It's got to be uncooked, not raw. She wants raw. Yeah. Raw, yeah. Raw, the raw, the better. <laughs> Still no cooked understand. potatoes for Val. I wonder if how's it, Val is up right now and tuning in. Is this some sponge kind of nestled in with the Over rock here? there? Yeah. You can take a look. That's, That's a large hemicorallian there, too. I keep trying to find a different color coral, and it's hard to find. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, get a partial zoom here. Probably two, two colonies, but still a oh very wow. impressive. Okay, we can push it a little further. Look, that looks like a little brittle star on there too. Glass sponge. Ready. Yep. Glass sponge, Roger. All right, let's come back up. What was that? Actually, if you zoom back in there. Oh, no, that's just the base of this big mm. coral, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. I have a question for Napoe Epikema. Um, how do you guys tell how old these coral are or the sponges? Like, what do you guys do to do that? Sponges are really difficult to tell how old they are. Um, corals um, can have sort of internal growth rings like trees. Oh, wow. So that really helps to be able to age them, although it's sometimes different species lay down those growth rings at different rates, so that makes it more complicated. Can we get a partial so zoom here? First, you have to figure out how fast they're making the rings, and then you have to count them, and <laughs> it's a process for sure. Sure. Wow. Hey, you want cool. me to change? Uh, Atlanta heading there, Paul? Um, yeah, just come to the north for a second. Right. The base of that coral looks to go right into that. Yeah. Mm. Buffered glass sponge oh, yeah. here. Oh no, it's behind it. Barely. Yeah, a few more types of sponge. Yeah. It seems. Awesome, thanks. Is the ship still moving? No. Oh, you can nope. see the base of that coral right over there. Ready for another move? Yeah, let's do another move. Same direction, same heading? Um, yeah, we can think about heading up towards waypoint seven. Yeah, let's just soon, it's fine. All right, uh, bridge, this is Nav. 
Please move the ship 20 meters north. Oh, that's not the base. I was wrong. More of that glass sponge. These rocks look pretty cooked, not uncooked to me. They do. <laughs> they do. Look, they look well cooked. Too many millions of years on the seabed. Yeah. What was happening on the planet when these rocks were formed? Yeah. Well, Crab up there. It's a good question. Oh yeah. If it's Cretaceous, it was when the dinosaurs were roaming the planet, and uh, we had a supercontinent. Pangea, What's and the there was no Atlantic Ocean. Can we get a zoom here on the little crab? Hey Dwight. Yes. What's Cretaceous mean? Cretaceous is a era, a, a, a period of uh, Earth history. Um, I think back when the dinosaurs lived, something like rough numbers, 200 million years to 100 million years ago. Long there's time ago. Wow. It looks like there's a sponge in that little crack between the rocks there, too. Yeah, there is. The uh, earth was super warm. There were oh, no polar ice high. caps. Hot sea ice. level was really, really high, at the highest it would ever be. Um, there were some I big inland seas and in places like um, the Midwest and the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Actually, really? yeah, there's you even some, some bring fossils. The to the right one? Yeah, that's there's some fo fish fossils in, in the middle of the continent. Oh, wow. It's uh, that's 0, crazy. 4, 5 now. Got it, thanks. Um, uh, 0, 4, flowering zero. No, plants I like we're just beginning zero, to three, zero. Yeah. show up. Sorry, what was that? Flowering plants were just beginning to show up on the planet yep. oh, wow. around that time. There was a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere, they think. Um, yeah, a lot of dinosaurs roaming the Earth. Um, and then by the Triassic, your Triassic period, Can we get a Pan Pangea started to break up and the Atlantic Ocean started to form and it all started rifting apart and the Pacific Ocean started to, or the Tethy Sea, I guess, started to shrink. Crazy. I, I forget which one of the poles was tropical, north or south pole. Um, yeah, I can't remember if it was in a reverse, I think it was a reverse polarity. Yeah. And uh, stable for a long, long time. I know we've seen a ton of coral density, but these corals are like spooning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> oh, is that a little yellow coral or something? Or is that a, just a dead piece of... I think that's a... Uh, Hydroids growing ah. on. So yeah, coral. Is that a sea cucumber or something up um, to the top right? Here? Uh, yeah, what is that? Hard to tell. Uh, Might be a sea pen. Something different, good eyes. I'm just going to come over a little bit. A uh, cup coral over there on the left. Lone cup coral. Go ahead. <laughs> Can we get a uh, partial zoom here? Yep, sea pen. Penetulation. I don't think Katachi heard you, George. No, those, can you come again? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a nice shot, thanks. Yeah, it's got a little, That's the a nice base shot. is kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A little bit translucent. <laughs> nice little hole there. That's a pen, Carl? Yeah. See pen? 
Thank you, Dwight, for he telling us about Pangea. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at it. Amazing. A couple of crabs crab crawling That's around. a nice crab, yeah. Probably the most type of these lithoted crabs we've seen, or the highest density of them we've seen. Usually it's squat lobsters. That was a good DSC shot there. Clicked oh, at the yeah. perfect time. I just saw it click. It's going to be a nice picture. Is this like the max speed of those crabs? I bet if disturbed by like a predator or something, you could think it really. They can go buggy, faster? But oh, okay. as far as just like. Okay, that's Argus now, uh, 0 0.45. Copy? Yeah. yeah. Bridge, this is Nav. Another 20 meters north, please. Let's change that a little bit more north, Dan. I'll come back. All right. <coughs> yeah, on the right side, mostly hemichorallium, then it switches to Chrysogorgia, like yeah, right look in the middle that. here. I've been noticing more and more there's like pretty unique zonation Zonal. between yeah. the two of them sometimes. I like your kilo skills, your observation skills of seeing the zonal difference, the, di the different zones of the different corals growing in their spaces. Well, there seems to be coral pretty much everywhere, so if there's ever anything that stands out or we want a second view of, just let me know. Sure. I like how there's that one line, like a long line of that hemichorallion. Yeah, they do are like pretty linear. That's a comfortable distance there. Yeah. You stay a little closer to it, you get a, a better, better view there. Yeah. Dr. Ballard likes the tight shots. Yeah. Is this a dead sponge, kind of where the lasers are? Looks like it to me. With the crab right behind it. Can we get a little zoom? Yeah, another one of those lithoted crabs. I zoomed in a bit on uh, Atlanta too for your info. So I won't freak out if. <laughs> what do you call the crab? Lithoted? Yeah, lithoted. Thanks, Jeff. It's the sort of group that has the king crabs. Okay, yeah. Look at the size of that base of that. I That's know. It's really amazing. giant. These are probably pretty old corals, if I had to guess, some of these larger ones. Definitely. Let's see if there's been any work done on aging them. Tons of coral here. Just uh, one. Your information is there. Let's do a um, Niskin here. We changed our mind about collecting more Niskins. Okay. You find my stash of AeroPress filters, did you? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Were they looking? <laughs> no, he's joking. You could use them. Uh, you probably yeah. could. <laughs> yeah. No, I think Leela said we there we could collect three per dive. Yep, 
you want to be floating, I think, for the oh, Got it. Up above, though. You yeah. should be able to punch in all your autos there. Just keep an eye on your verts, make sure it doesn't Really crazy. dense uh, colonies here. So I'm looking at something that says the sort of lifespan of these sort of corallid corals is in, on the order of hundreds of years, so maybe about right, 500 yeah. years. Punch in, uh, punch in auto head as well. I'll just watch it for a minute, see if it holds. Chrysogorgids can live to almost 5,000 years, it looks like. Wow. Then uh, rack your camera back. Crazy. That is an old coral. So are you guys going to go for the Niskin? Yeah. Yep, going for it. It's freaking you out because it, it oscillates a bit. I can tighten that up here with the settings. You can also age these corals with certain isotopes like carbon-14 or the ratio of uranium to thorium. So it's not just the rings in them that sort of are the only way you can tell the age. If the auto freaks out while you got your hands full there, just uh, take off auto depth and it'll just start floating up. You'll got be, it. Yeah. First Which button one? to press. Followed by auto XY. Uh, and which one are we going for? Number four here it looks yeah, like? Yeah, number four. Which is the orange. Yep. Nice. Here's a good question. Do colonial organisms such as coral die of old age, age specifically, or is it more of a ship of Theseus scenario where the organism just keeps replacing it? the individual that do die? I think they do um, sort of have a maximum age I and sort of I'll when you see the skeleton turning it white it at the awesome. base and it sort of moves its way up that's it sort of getting gray and old so we're running out of time a little bit uh as we so no replacements keep moving north here let's keep an eye out for a safe place to sample a rock roger that's bridge, good bridge this is nav can we do 30 meters north please it's a great question though Does the coral in this deep, um, deep part of the ocean get impacted by coral bleaching, or is it only the coral we see snorkeling? Yeah, so that's only shallow water corals, because bleaching is when you are ejecting the algae out of your tissues. And so corals this deep don't have any algae in their tissues, because there's no sunlight down here. I'm going to come around to the north of you, Dan. All right, yeah, I'm still 060 over here. They can feel some of the environmental stress that causes bleaching, like ocean acidification and temperature. Mm. Uh, but because they don't have that algae, they sort of don't have that outward appearance of stress uh, necessarily in the same way as shallow water corals. Thank you. We're 
We're going to look for a rock around here or just continue moving in when we get to the next waypoint to the rock there? Uh, we won't have too much time. We only have like 10 or 15 minutes left, so. Do we like any of these rocks? Yeah, kind of. I want to sit down on top of a coral, though. Look for a place you can set your minibus down in the rocks without killing all the pedestrians. Yeah, they're There's a little, little cooked, but we'll, we'll patch right here. collect one anyway. Um, I don't know. You can also find a steep spot on the hill where you just nose your bumper in. Yeah. And you know, it's, the whole vehicle's not landing, just the front's touching. I agree with you, Jason. Who's Jason? <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, loyal follower, frequent flyer, definitely. Uh oh, hi, Jason. <laughs> Are any of these uncooked yeah. potatoes? Uh -huh. Do you think you can nose in and get stable enough to go for a grab? We could probably, you want to do one on the fly? Yeah, yeah. let's try it. Yeah, I could pick one up, boy. Just come low enough. Grab yeah, I'd up. just go for one of these uh, melon size. You look Big down a little, Paul, and show us the, just a little bit of the front of the vehicle. Oh, sorry. So, Dwight, for our listeners, totally not for me. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, that'll give you okay. a good reference on how low you can go difference between and cooked and uncooked. And okay. they'll be able to reach the rock. Well, we, we, we're using the word cooked loosely. They're all rocks. Rocks have all been cooked one way or another. <laughs> so uh, I'll wait for um, your, whenever you're happy, the, I'll uh, go for it. The, the ones Val likes are ones with minimal uh, manganese okay. crusts, right. or at least thick They're enough so that good. you can get past happy the manganese there? crust and so. find fine rock so nodules wouldn't be good because they they're formed differently than right. crusts on mostly rocks. crust yeah and um this one looks pretty not good as far. long as it's not can't flat. get there from there uh, can't get here from there because even though it okay. has a pretty Close thick up. manganese coating on it it, it um w it, we should be able to cut it open and really see the interior of the rocket you know the lava that right. crystallized okay cool yeah thanks for that so do you would avoid darker rocks? Is that what you're saying? Well, we we would try to avoid them that had You'll have to uh, get closer. the manganese co coating, which sometimes is darker. Sometimes it's got that boitroidal, I can never say that word right, boitroidal uh, structures on it, which are, looks like little tiny bubbles. Oh, right, right. And yeah. um, ones that look 1. like they're four um, meters. Degra degraded somehow. You know, crumbly. You don't want something crumbly for sure. Gotcha. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Which one are we oh, going for? Yeah, that for one's here? too big. So. The one to the left, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, that, that one would be nice for it. If it's the one loose. up here. Yeah. That guy. It's a little large. Do you think? I don't know what's in the box. It's definitely but shiny. You have one of the big. Uh, Wow, that's too big, I think. What about the one in front of it? Yeah. Can't reach. Oh. How about this one with lasers were? Sorry, Dan. Crusty. One looks a little flat, yeah. Ooh. Larger one behind it. What's that little thingy? Oh, that's a rock. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's got that triangle, triangle round shape she likes to. Yeah, too. I think this is a good one. Good find. Put that on your rock saw. <laughs> Barnacle on it? Looks like a little squat lobster on the left side of it. Oh, yeah. Do we have anything floaty in the, uh, or is this going in starboard, right? Starboard. Starboard. Do we have anything for oh, the look, starboard? starboard E is a uh, shiny open. bits on there. 
zoom in a bit more. It can go in the larger compartment, though, so you don't need to get out so far. Need to, oh, yeah. yeah. A little glass in there, maybe. Yeah, yeah it looks like a good one. Final sample. I hope that little squat lobster makes it. Yeah. Bonus. That thing is tiny. <laughs> cool. Yeah, definitely some shiny glass oh, yeah. there. Yeah. All right, sample tray coming out. How many stones? Or. That might be two stones, that one. Looks like a stone to me. It's about the average size rock you'd use for a ship's ballast. E? E. E. Right? Yes, E. Echo. The uh, fabled spin move off the push core. Good reorientation. Nice job. Life is complete. I got a good rock <laughs> on this expedition. Is this your first rock sample, Dan? Mm -hmm. I mean, on this one? First decent yeah. rock. <coughs> Yay, Dad. We'll cut you a sliver of it. <laughs> That'd be sweet. I don't know if I have room at home. Quite the pile. <laughs> do we want another ship move? One last one, or do we just want to ascend? Yeah, I think we have. Right. Yeah, if you yeah. want to spend a little time driving up to the summit here. Then All right. There's always room for one more rock in the exhibit somewhere. <laughs> Rich, this is Nav. Uh, we had um, to build a bigger car. please. Ooh, I need to cover ahead of you. Back towards you. There's a lot of bases on this rock, too, from wow, previous Wow, look at that Chrysogorgia. Wow, field of Chrysogorgia, wow. So many. It's funny, this machine was locked up for a while and then I didn't do anything and now it's working again. Huh. Dan, how many ROVs did you build? How many have I built? Yeah. Oh. Or were you a part of the building? Yeah, dozens. I've taken. Uh, at least 16 out of the box and uh, run them down to 3,000 meters for the first time. Wow. I got two different clients that each bought eight. Wow. That was a lot of fun. The, mob the mobilizations were quite brutal though. One vessel we put... We uh, zoom on that black hole. Yeah. Had, had over 600 discrete cables and a lot of them there were like three runs of the cables. So two giant motor generators, two big launch recovery systems. It's a zoom in. Is that a black coral or a Yeah, that's yeah. Bathy Pathies. Say it, Malanai. Bathy Pathies. <laughs> <laughs> and then that would be a Koa Ele Ele. <laughs> It's Ryan's turn. <laughs> Co He's Co choking over <laughs> here. <laughs> Are we uh, good on the view? Yeah, so thank you. Yeah. Nice shot, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was so loud. I Somehow the uh, Atlanta heading wound up looking east. Not sure when that happened. Looks like 
looks like we have another one of these black corals, maybe. Can we get a zoom, Jeff? Ryan is, is nodding and mm as he's drinking water to <laughs> retrieve his breath. All right, Mal and I, what are these called if Ryan's busy? Okay, it's a black coral and Chrysogorgia. What was uh, the name? Wait, oh, yeah. he's, he's Bathy Pathies. Bathy Pathies. Yeah. Bathy Pathies. Yep. And one of those. Oh, a sea pen Ooh, back there. pen. A little rock pen. Rock pen. Oh, another sea pen off to the right, right. A few of them. Oh, yeah. Bathy Pathies and Chrysogorgia. Right, let's come back in. Ah, that's better. There has to be a fancy name for the sea pens too. Oh, there is their penatulations. <laughs> what is it? Penatulatia <laughs> is their name. All right, thanks. The name of the group. I don't think I've heard that one before. Say it one more time. Penatulatia. 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 And that Penatulatia. sort of thing at the bottom. You don't just um, add it to them. Bring them down. Is their <laughs> peduncle. See a day, pen a day. Pen a day. Yeah. See pen a day. <laughs> <laughs> pen a day. That's all we ask. I think this is it. Is this the top? Anything on sonar? Oh, I guess there is. Yeah, we've reached it. Two more black corals in view right now. A little farther ahead. Bathy bathies. Nice. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah. a little fish? Yep. Oh, yeah. And a primnoid off to the right over there. Yeah. Can we get a zoom on the fish? <laughs> I keep on forgetting that I'm on camera right now, and I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, a fishy. Another one of those not corythonoides. <laughs> All right. Gone. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't believe how many Christ gorges are here. All right, you guys want to start thinking about recovery? Yeah, I, calculated I just calculated 128 minutes at I, 15. Yeah, I got about two hour, two hour ride up. Pathogorgia. Do you want to drop a plate? Yeah. There's that sandy clearing. The, you, you might be over. Chrysogorgia. Chrysogorgia. Yeah. How about uh, one more minute? We pull the plug. Sounds good to me. Let's rush yeah. up to the top of these little. Yeah. Happy to do that, Dwight. Or you want to pull it right at the hour? The, the weight. Uh, no, when we start uh, coming up. Oh, yeah, we're going to collect uh, 10 meters up a uh, um, background eDNA. No? Mm -mm. No, they said no. No oh. more. Because, um, how does she explain it? So sorry guys, scratch that. We don't need a we don't need another Niskin. Roger. So you have uh, officially two more minutes and all right twenty eight minute ride. What are you gonna do with your two minutes? I wanna get up to the top of <laughs> this. There's we're still getting things on the uh, sonar. Yeah, we gotta find something cool. So in two minutes, I'm going to come up on the winch. You can do whatever you want with the turf. So. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, I stay down as long as humanly possible. Argonaut is treating us well. Yeah. You can tell we don't want to leave. There's too many things to see. I haven't felt like this since I was a kid, you know. Can I just stay, can I stay up a few more minutes? <laughs> can I look at just a few more corals? 
No. Nope. <laughs> Bad time. Otherwise you're grumpy. Time. Otherwise the deck foreman is grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to find around? a good good spot to ditch a weight, right? Or have they all been pulled? No, none of them have been pulled. Uh oh, we can uh, pull one on the way up. Are there any Canadians on this expedition? Uh, there are. Definitely. Should I come around uh, behind you to? No, you don't. Percent? No, you don't got to do anything. Easy. We can keep going until the last second, and you'll get pulled off the bottom. Just one, I think. The only thing we really have to worry about, Paul, is the turns, so which way, uh, but we can always deal with that on the ascent. We got Pretty much out of sonar hours. targets now. Yeah, it looks like we made it. King of the hill. Yeah. Nice job. Wow. Nice. And one more. Exactly at the 128 minute. Oh, yeah. One more right. forest of these things. Pass that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up on the winch. Chrysogorgia. How long can These you hold out? These things are Paul. <laughs> With a common name, Mal and I. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Tell me, Ryan. Bottle brush. Bottle brush. Bottle oh, brush? I see. That's uh, Argus officially leaving the seabed. So see. do I want to start coming up? Say like goodbye to Argonaut. Uh, Argonaut. Hold out as long see as you later, can. Argonaut. Argonaut. It's sad to part ways. If you turn your Come head. Full stick. If you turn your head away from Argus, you can like hold it down for just a few more minutes. Yeah, we um, <laughs> we're gonna be tail to tail here. Yep. Ahoy ho! Oh. Come on, fight and it, Paul! <laughs> fight it! Fight it! You can hold it. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. The winch always and wins. There we go. <laughs> Ah, we ho, mahalo. Yeah, mahalo. Turns all good there, are they? Uh, yeah, we got point one on the tether wraps. And, or, yeah, zero on the tether wraps, point oh. one on the six eight. Well, that worked out well. I did try to spin around for that. Yeah, it's always fun to hold out as long as you can. Uh, now that you're off, you want to full vertical up and just a little bit ahead. Make sure your Z bias is off. It's like six, five, six percent. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and if you want to uh, get a little more speed, you can do the windshield wiper thing. Put in twenty to thirty percent on the lateral. You're going to have to drop at least one weight, probably two. I'll uh, wreck your camera back one. Right mm -hmm. I can find the right button. Have you seen any of the Hugangnus species of coral? So. We saw huge Jangness um, sponges on those big boulders that were split in half. Remember that this morning? You don't? <laughs> Are you serious? No. Which uh, weight do we want to take? One of the left ones? Yeah. Um, the left ones. They were the. I wrote right. it down. Doesn't matter. Whatever one you want. Jeff, can we push in just a touch? That's a little bit back. Yeah, thank you.
Would that help? Yes, yeah, so we'll have to get rid of the other one too to make our target, Tim. Uh, We're heavy with that last rock. No laughing. No fun allowed in the control room. <laughs> it's the science. Some of these comments got me. <laughs> this is science. That was good. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the nodule net. We haven't had to use that. <laughs> should we toss it? <laughs> no. <laughs> it weighs a little too much. Uh, last one. No, let's park it. See how that goes. Get some grief at the boss. Or... Yeah, Raj. We need enough steel to get through the last uh, expedition. We'll see how that goes. If we have to, we do. But Do you see anything, Kotachi? Oh, I'm loving all of it. I think we got to thank you from our frequent flyer. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll have to uh, turn your head to you the left You got to go to there. the top so we can show Dwight what I was laughing at. This one here. <laughs> <laughs> see yourself in that. We want to be tail to tail, right? Yeah. If you just, uh, you need to probably a little more forward. Did you turn off your blue button? That'll make a big difference. Yeah, I just did. Should I be spinning to the left? Hey, I think so. The original oh, one is minute. this one right here. No, no other way. Still rising up? Yep, we're coming up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that was right. Sorry. My bad. You're right. <laughs> Yeah, I think Atalanta just got twisted around. I don't have enough. I might have, yeah. This is live and direct coming at you from the middle of the ocean in Papahana Wakuhake Marine National Monument. Live and direct. Live and direct. Or we could just okay. roll over. Play ahead on that. Let's see if our tether is playing. We are Eight o'clock GMT. We just left uh, Argonaut. Is that good? Yeah, totally clean. Currently at 1,800 looks meters. Like the, uh, looks happy in the aft camera, I say. Mm -hmm. put, uh, put about 30% uh, lateral one way or the other. What time do interactions and, uh, start And turn tomorrow? your joy gain all the way Two up. Two in the morning. Wow. What? Four hours. That's in four hours, yes. I'm glad I took so a number of naps today. Maybe 10% ahead, 30% lateral, 100% uh, verts. Uh, Europe or something? I don't, I don't remember, but it probably is for it to be that early. Uh, that's all right. I get you, you 20 be meters on that there. Me? Yeah. No, I'm asking. Oh, I don't know if I gotta be on that one yet. Here, let me look. Well, it should be who's oh, on is that watch, the wrong right? way lateral? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> well, one way it gets you a little better than the other, but for some reason it really helps to come up. You think it's the same person? <laughs> I, I am so gullible sometimes. Oh, did you actually <laughs> say it? She, she asked me, yeah. Uh, here. Um. Stop it. 
stop. Just stop. You read it out loud? No. <laughs> and then um, over here. I guess Milo and I got punked. <laughs> Thanks, Gotachi. <laughs> Do you give Trevor a shout out? There's someone asking if there's any Canadians on the expedition. Do we stay fully retracted? Yeah, shout out to Trevor. I think yeah, he okay. is the only one. No, one of the crew members is also Canadian. Oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Undergrad. Oh, cool. What's I didn't know Trevor was Canadian. We got a uh, San Diego. Where, um, what school do you go to? We've got two UCSD alums here in the front row, yeah. and another San one. San Diego native. Yeah. <laughs> Three <laughs> San Diego natives, <laughs> also born and raised in San Diego. Wow. No wonder the driving's been the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> that explains some things, does it? <laughs> Californians are great drivers unless there's other cars on the road or it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight, I was thinking about um, seeing if you'd like to join me for a 1 p.m. interaction. 1 p.m. I can do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can uh, rack out if you want. Okay. Look at all blue water. That's up to you. That doesn't. That's uh, okay. I like looking at the vehicle. It's a. Uh, um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I haven't done one yet. It's it's gonna be with my coworkers. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Too bad I cannot fit everybody in there I with know. us. <laughs> Aloha, Mama. Uh, just letting you know that our approximate recovery time is in Aww, 90 minutes. So cute. So, uh, what is that, 11.30? And then... Uh, uh, it'll be closer to, to send my mom. midnight. <laughs> Touchy with that number don't believe that number 100 percent okay um what will happen is we'll get some good speed here but once we get shallower it'll slow down to like 13 so it'll average out all right i apologize um we'll get there approximately at midnight yeah on deck at midnight that's yeah it's it's not a hard number in that number will go up and down as we play with it on the way up. Copy. And always, uh, when we get shallower, it, it uh, I don't know why, but it slows down. I'm excited to see this nighttime recovery, because I, I don't feel like I've seen a nighttime recovery in a while, or have I? Maybe, I don't know. I'm kind of just really excited to see the water glow. Yeah, I think really early on we had a couple midnight recoveries, right? Yeah. Have you flown a recovery yet, Paul? It's tough for one. you because you have to stay up. I know. One. <laughs> yeah. Are you up for doing another one? It's okay. Yeah. It's uh, Ryan too. You guys are yeah. hardcore. on the way up, but. What's that? We'll, let's talk through it a little bit on the way up, but Roger. yeah. So I. I play this game to uh, have the least amount of control input as possible. <laughs> and uh, the difference between that and a dead vehicle recovery is like minimal. <laughs> so I've actually come up and not touched the controls at all except to change the heading a little. That's how good oh. Mark is at pulling these <laughs> back on okay. the bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, this one? Oh. Trash. Trash. Not underwater trash, sorry. Mm -mm. <laughs> Basically, so the process is, I mean, try to come up in the goal posts, um, yeah. find the vehicle, and, uh, but at some point, don't we lose? We should start putting a document together, but I can walk you through it if you want. Um, so at 
about 500 meters. I'm looking at um, the position of the vehicles in relation to the boat, and I'm also uh, looking at the DP screen to see what the surface current is going to do compared to what it is then. And I start watching it a little closer, like right now it doesn't matter obviously, right? Where on the DP screen are you getting the surface current? A little uh, blue squiggly. So this is the current and that's the wind and they are shown here uh, and here. Got it. So wind speed, current. Perfect. So once we start streaming, that information is no longer valid because the ship's moving. So depending on how it's behaving, uh, we typically don't like to start streaming before 500 or 300 because of that. In particular, some of the navigators want to know that all the way as long as possible. Um, so if the ROVs aren't behaving and lined out behind the ship, I'll start streaming to get them that way. Certainly by um, 230, 230, 250, if the ducks aren't in a row, I'll stream a little faster, uh, moving the ship forward. Um, then you'll probably, then everything should be good, and I'm watching the, uh, the cameras and the, and the compasses, mm -hmm. just to get my, that kind of burned into my reptile brain. Because uh, around, depending on the, on this vessel, it's good up to probably 50 meters after that, you know, I don't rely on the nav at all, then it's all on the, the compasses of posing uh, as and these yeah yeah and obviously uh, it was not muting their mic Hercules on the inverse heading of uh, you know art uh, Atlanta and the vessel on the same heading Hercules on the inverse heading so everything's lined up good and if they start coming around you know, should see it right away in those two aft cameras or the compasses and I'm watching my delta a little tighter then. And then, yeah, you shouldn't have to put any input to make a goal just a little bit. If 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 you're not, if you see it coming off, go faster forward with the vessel. Um, if that's not working, then you change the vessel's uh, course over ground, which the nomenclature we're using for that now is the track. track. Yeah, so you can change the track by 15, 30, 45, whatever it takes. And ideally, so, the happiest place for the track is going straight into the current. Yeah, the bridge shouldn't. It 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 depends on which way the vehicles are going. So you basically change the the course over ground to bring Hercules back in line in the goal oh, position, oh. as we call it. Right. Got yeah. It. So for example, if Hercules is trending uh, to the port side of the vessel, you change the track to the left a little. So, like, if it's heading now is, you know, zero four five, for example, you would say, you know, maintain speed in heading, change bearing, or change track to zero one five, and that'll bring the ship over in this kind of motion, which will drag Hercules in the back. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell to get to make the goal. Um, And then I'll usually leave the sonars on. To, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, one thing to also start watching, especially here in the tropics, is um, the temperature of the motor and your HPU volume. Um, if on the last expedition we were going from water temperature 12 degrees to water temperature 26 degrees in the blink of an eye, and that's pretty much like running on deck. Yeah. So the the motor gets hot and the uh, hydraulic oil gets hot, which expands the compensator to dangerous levels. So in that case, I'll go into uh, bypass, and uh, and then if you also have excessive current you're fighting, I move the ship even faster. So at some points, you know, you're up to a knot and a half uh, over ground. It depends on what the current's doing. It might be zero way through the water. Um, 
And then I'll double check all the other kibbles and bits, in particular the magnum. Uh, I like to put it in front of the port so it doesn't smack the skid on the way in. Uh, make sure all the boxes are still closed. And uh, Yeah, so then um, once you make the goal, you there's some things to watch on the deck. By then we'll have the deck cameras. So the main things are when to pull on Atlanta and when not to, and the same with the crane. So if the way I wrap my head around it is, I, is Hercules is the tagline for yeah. Atlanta. So obviously you want to be pulling, just like when you're pulling on Hercules' tether when we're bringing it aboard, you want to be pulling on Atlanta's tether with Hercules while it's coming on board. And after it's on board, you don't want to pull on it because it will pull it back off. Yeah, it will move it around on the deck, especially in weather. It's, should, it's not too big of an issue when it's calm. Yeah. But in weather, yeah, you, you actually have to put a little slack in the tether, otherwise it's quite violent. And yeah. It, it jerks hard enough um, where I've seen it part one of the tugger lines. Yeah. So, uh, and then. Um, When they're doing the daisy chain, you need to keep your tether taut, but not tight enough to be jerking on Atlanta. While the, so at that point, Mark's behind Atlanta. And that's, yeah, probably the riskiest part as far as personnel on deck when they're around Atlanta and Hercules is still in the water. Uh, depending on how the current was when you were coming up at that point you have the option to tell the ship to hold position um, if you can't be bothered with any of that if you were doing a half a knot or less you can just stay doing half a knot mm -hmm. which I prefer to do so if, if we came all the way up and we were streaming at our normal half a knot I'll just leave them streaming the whole way uh, I got you there is if you have current coming the other way and you stop the ship you'll get blown Cut back onto the ship it, yeah. yeah or them stopping will uh, maybe you know if they if they lose the dp and the ship has some forward way on they'll have more time to recover because mm -hmm. they're you know this big ship moving through the water is not going to stop immediately immediately it's going to keep going so it'll give you maybe you know another minute or that can make a big difference if things are going sideways yeah and it's just one less thing to worry about. Um, yeah, so then I watch the the people on the deck and the daisy chain coming off and make sure it doesn't get uh, fouled up in the tether. And I try and maintain during the whole recovery a view of the tether going back. A lot of pilots will turn and the tether will do a hard angle around the vehicle. So I try and keep Nautilus on Her Herx 6, as they call it, on its aft. And you can tell you're doing that if the compass is going wonky or uh, you can't see in the deck cameras. That tether camera is your friend at that point. Right. And um, then once the daisy chain is clear and... Um, they're getting the rope, the recovery line onto the crane. Uh, so you have to be a little bit taut while they're getting the daisy chain clear, otherwise it gets fouled up. And then you also have to be a little bit taut when he first starts pulling on that uh, on the crane. It has to pop pop the uh, the recovery line off the tape off the back of the pen restrictor. Once that's done, then you can basically take your hands off the stick and you only need to adjust your heading. And you basically want the heading to be um, straight out from the side of the ship by the time it gets No, around. just away from the ship, no matter. Oh. So if, if this is Herc and this is Nautilus. Yeah, yeah. So you're like this, you just want to be Got facing it. away all the time. Yeah, Got that's, it. You don't want to be like this. Yeah, yeah. And part of the reason that for that is they're pulling the recovery line and your tether in. So if you're like this, it's going to twist it. And yeah, more likely to get fouled up if like a big wave comes or you lose your heading or something. Right. Um, 
and then the way the crane pulls it through, it's easier for it to pull it through than sideways. So you basically, once you're on the crane, he'll pull you in and swing the crane around. All you got to do is adjust your heading a little. Yeah. And then other, the main thing I like to do that is if the ship moves or the crane pulls you too f close, you can give it a squirt forward and get away from the vessel. So I always, you know, keep my escape path. Yeah. If you're sideways to the boat and things go pear-shaped in a hurry, by the time you turn your heading and try and think about, okay, the boat's on this heading, I need to turn my heading to this, or try and look at the deck camera and the sun, sun's in your eye, or the deck camera moves, or you don't have to think about any of that if you always are facing away from the vessel. It's your, yeah. sa your safe heading, what we call that. And yeah. Other uh, systems call it the safe heading. And then uh, it's not too bad when it's calm, but the other thing I watch is the sway limiter on the crane. So you know how it gets quite wild on deck, swinging up and down. So if it's swinging way horizontal, you're pulling too hard. Or there's some more current, you actually have to back in a little. So I try and keep it, I try and keep the violence on the crane to a minimum. Yeah. But usually it takes very little force to pull this ROV through the water, you know, maybe yeah. 30 pounds. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just if you picture, uh, if you've ever been out in a, a ski boat or a recreational boat, yeah, you sit next to the dock, mm. holding the boat with your hand, and you could like that. push the boat away from the dock with your hand. You can do the same with the ROV. So yeah. If you've ever been in the water with one, you know you can push it away with your hand. Yeah. So to kind of summarize the big steps, it's the goalpost first. Yeah. Then goalpost without overheating the motor. Yeah. <laughs> then tension to be a tagline for Atalanta, yep. then come off tension um, while well they bring it on and cinch it down, yeah. then keep it just, just taut but carefully uh, when they take the daisy chain off, Correct. Yeah. and then basically just keep that safe heading as it comes around. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, be ready on, uh, I'll usually turn off all the lights um, <laughs> when the vehicle's under the lights of the of the ship if you don't need them on and be ready on the bypass page to um, before you shut the vehicle off oh come out of bypass first yeah yeah, yeah. and if you've been using auto heading uh, turn that off before it pulls the vehicle up because it spins on the crane, and the thrusters will spin up violently in the air, in the air, which is bad. I've seen that happen a few times. And I've Got done it. that a few times myself. <laughs> oh yeah, out of heading. Yeah. So, <coughs> and changing the heading around. If I'm being lazy, I'll just click in and out of auto heading. So I'll come out of auto heading, adjust my heading, and click back in. typically do that anytime I change my heading anyway, so I don't like to change heading with auto heading on. Got it. It's a habit from operating other vehicles that don't behave well. And this one, people are always changing how fast it changes in auto heading, so I don't even bother. I just use it as a lock. Got it. But that's more of a personal, personal preference. To Shout out to the San Diegan. Si se puede. Do the ROVs get sterilized after a dive to prevent contamination or bioseeding of the next ecosystems visited? Yeah, we do um, a freshwater rinse of both vehicles after every dive, and the uh, you know all the sample containers get rinsed out as well and um, flushed, refilled with fresh water. So it's a you know loose definition of sterilized, but we definitely. Uh, do what we can and I, I, in general also that's just to make sure that the samples aren't 
cross-contaminated, um, and to get the salt off the vehicles as well, reduce any kind of corrosion. Sounds good. And then it, um, there was a question that came by a while ago that asked, why did we pull up a ribbon? And that's for the Niskin uh, sample, right? We pull the ribbon to take a sample of the water. Is it even called a ribbon? It's probably not called a ribbon. A ribbon's a good name for it. It's actually some uh, monofilament line that's connected to the trigger on the Niskin. We have uh, some colored electrical tape on them so we can differentiate which one's which. Which doesn't help me at all because I'm colorblind. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. So these are those ribbons. Wow, that's touch screen. Yeah. Um, there are labels for each color, but uh, they're really hard to read, so the colors help a lot. Mm. <laughs> yeah, if you want me to think I'm stalking you. <laughs> Hey, Katachi. Yes, sir. What uh, version of ROS were you using for your UUV model? Uh, the old one. So, unfortunately... Uh, no, Melodic. Really? Yeah, yeah. But they have um, Noetic for a newer operating system of Ubuntu. So, yeah. Melodic is, I think, the 1804. Um, yeah. Noetic runs on 2004. Yeah, that's what I'm running. But the UUV model won't run? On Noetic, or have you tried it? Uh, well, the problem is um, Ross took a long time to migrate from Python 2 to Python 3. Yeah. So Melodic is the last version, I think, that still primarily uses Python 2. Um, and, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things don't play well because Noetic uses Python 3. And right. the UV simulator runs on Melodic and uses a bunch of stuff that's like Python 2.7. Yeah, I run into that issue all the time with <laughs> trying to follow a tutorial or something and it's all Python 2 and none of it works. Right, like, right. <sighs> For me anyway, that was the most like frustrating part about dealing with robotics is um, I, I would usually try to look for an error if something doesn't work with my own code and I didn't realize that a lot of times it's like I installed one thing and they don't play well with this other thing and you have no idea. Uh, <laughs> so apparently like never try not to install ROS and Anaconda at the same time because they both try to do things with Python path and it, there are ways to get around it but it's, it's like a not intuitive problem. No, I've got been in like two days in, you know, and then realized I've beaten my head against the wall for yeah, yeah. using the uh, mix and imagine. Yeah. Are you running that in a, uh, a native installation or a virtual machine? Nope. <laughs> Everything is exposed. It's just on my laptop. Um, I've learned through experience and many times wiping my computer <laughs> not not to download things very callously. Right. <laughs> but the the UUV simulation have you tried to run that in a virtual machine? Uh no, but it works. It it, it can be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are streaming twenty four seven, however, um when we aren't diving there isn't anyone talking usually. But if um if you would like to, you can actually book a ship to shore interaction with a classroom. And if you're interested in that, you can um, poke around on the um, nautiluslive.org website and you can actually register for a live ship to shore interaction. You can search it on 
on Google Nautilus Live ship to shore interaction and it may pop up and you can read about it there and you can um, register and book yourself a appointment with your your classroom there. We we were supposed to have 11 ship to shore interactions today but some of them weren't able to um, join us. Tomorrow we have about I didn't count. Let's let's see how much do we have tomorrow. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine interactions scheduled for tomorrow. And if um, you can schedule like up to two days prior to, but um, we like more time ahead to plan. <clears throat> and then um, when you go in right in there, you can also put in there, I want to talk to an ROV pilot so that when we have our live interaction, we can make sure to get an ROV pilot. Or if you want a biologist, we can get that one in. Or if you want a, uh, the video engineers and you want to talk about that, um, we can get them in there. Just make sure you write that in your when you register. Not th not this one here. Nope. Maybe maybe we can get Steve on there. Yeah. Awesome. Is there any visible man-made pollution down at the seamounts? I this person wasn't able to see it while she was while he or she was watching, but wanted to ask and check in about that. Yeah, so uh, we actually haven't seen a ton. Um, seen a, a couple pieces of uh, fishing net, and I think one fishing line with some rope. Uh, but besides that, it's been nice to see some uh, areas where you see relatively little. Um, anthropogenic impacts on the seafloor. So it's been nice. Okay, to be fair, I actually have done an interaction. Mm. So Good job. So it's not like I've never done them. Mm. Usually I, you know, I got something I gotta do. Yeah, you're a busy man. I'm a busy guy. We can get Rhett and Steve to jump in on this. Have you gotten Rhett for one yet? I have, I think, he was, I saw his name on the board. He was signed up. Um, so I'll have to ask him. Oh, we've got a robotics team coming in on Monday. I'll have to make sure that we get one of the ROV pilots to join us on that day. On Monday, ROV pilots to join us with the Kamehameha Schools class. Tomorrow is Earth Day? It is. Is it? I believe so. Every day. Every I day thought it's usually on a Saturday or Sunday. Oh, but I, I don't know. Yeah, every day is Earth Day for us. We so we live yeah. on the Earth. There ain't no one day we ain't here. Yep. <laughs> Annually every April 22nd. Oh. So. Oh, wow. Hmm. So Good night to those of you who are signing off. Sorry, go on. Oh, I was just gonna say, as we recover, it'll, we will be turning to Earth Day. So, mm. nice way to start Earth Day, looking at some rocks and animals. Definitely. Right. Look, is that a little? What is that floating around in front of our oh, screen? Some type of jelly thing. Polio. Goodbye. <laughs> he. <laughs> we don't need to go after it. <laughs> I've already tried uh, the tug of war against the ship <laughs> once and lost. So. <laughs> <laughs> It is Earth Day tomorrow. Hmm? <laughs> I guess I always thought it was on a weekend for some reason, but it's not. It's always on April 22nd. I'm wondering how people get emojis up in this comment section. Maybe because they're t turning on the comment sections on their phones. Look, we have we have the chief engineer in our in the winch hold. Yuri. Yeah, is that is that him? Yep. I was wondering, does the uh, um, does the line get rinsed with fresh water before it goes to the? Nope, Roger. Uh, but that's a good idea. I need to uh, put that note in the red book. We typically do that on our deepest dive, and I think our next dive is our deepest dive. 
Yes. It Remind is. me to put that on the whiteboard too. Oh. Oh I'll put yeah. it on tomorrow's page. Okay, now I'll call. Oh. Might want to send that out oh. to the group. <laughs> yeah. They've got a. Uh, oh, we do it on the way up from the deepest dive, or? He's going in. I'm just gonna. Uh, what's the next dive? Thirty-five hundred. No, what's the number? Oh. Twenty-three. What determines the numbers that we give these dives? Can you message in the group. Yeah. Cool. Um, it is how many dives Hercules has done. What? But, uh, starting at one thousand, I believe. So we started at one zero zero zero. Correct. So. This is Hercules' 922nd dive. Wow. And you can see we have counters for all the other vehicles, um, like Argus only, Little Herc, Atalanta only, um, ASV, Drix. Why do you index them with the 1,000? Just because? Just so then it's the same number of places, probably. Yeah. Day. Yeah, I think we knew that we would do more than a thousand, so we didn't want to have it be a three digit um, number, you know. Oh, yeah, but I was wondering how, why not like H0922? Or have we? Yeah, we could have done a zero in there, I guess. I don't know. It sounded better at the time, maybe. <laughs> Another little jellyfish. Floating down. <laughs> There must be some logic to why they started with a thousand. I can't really remember. It does sound cool. <laughs> Did they start with a thousand? Yeah. And then H stands for Hercules? Yeah. yeah. Homeboy. <laughs> I think in the case of Hercules, the first year or two, we didn't actually count the dive number. We didn't number the dives like that. Uh, okay. And um, so we knew we did some earlier so that we would Round have the up. ability to go backwards from 1001. Um, so there might be some yeah. logged, some log dive for like H0997 or something, you know? Gotcha. Doesn't work. Tried it. It does work. Oh. It'll wear it out. The plastic won't take the in and out. Mm -hmm. It's my very first uh, 3D print. Uh, or one of my early 3D prints. What kind of printer do you have? Pressure 3. Nice. Knock off one, one of the um, monopress. Mm. I've got two of them actually, the mini and the two. I've got the... Uh, Two of the name brand Prusas that got for work, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I bought the Mini off Craigslist for like 75 bucks. It nice. wasn't working. I placed a few parts on it, and it's been the most reliable of nice. the two. Yeah, I never have to, like, I have to change the nozzle once every six months or something. Yeah. And, just, it's a, and it's faster and more accurate than the two. I've been doing so little printing since my three, PhD sorry. that now I spend more time just like every time I go to use them doing that little bit of maintenance than I spend time actually printing. But I want to uh, get one of the resin printers. So. Yeah, those are cool. Use those a lot as well, but never... I didn't really want to bring one of those into my home because it's just a lot of chemicals and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, the PLA is pretty mild. The yeah. Yeah, the mini's the bomb. It's like super easy, low maintenance. The other one is uh, a 
Yeah, the one's checked out now. It's got all the mods on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the PLA, I know like some friends in grad school that would have one in their like bedroom because it's the only place you could have, and yeah. I wouldn't want to breathe it. I mean, I don't think it's that bad, but I wouldn't want to breathe it <laughs> overnight, all night. No. It's your own little like essential oil diffuser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for melted plastic. Yeah, yeah. I think they're they're good. pretty harmful. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about them. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a growing field of research about uh, how how they're harmful to us. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> PLA is probably the mildest one. Is it? Um, but. Okay, question. Are the <laughs> are the ROV drivers big on gaming on PC or consoles? And if so, does playing games help them with um, driving the ROVs? Nope. And nope. <laughs> <laughs> yes and nope. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just don't play Mario Kart, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we get that question quite often sorry to be flippant it it there are some games you can play that gives you uh, the spatial awareness 3d spatial awareness but uh, i think the most you can get from playing a video game is how to move a joystick which can be handy because Little Herc is controlled by. Yeah, it's a joystick's or, a joystick. Or, but pilot, or piloted by a uh, Xbox controller. I think what's uh, more applicable from what I've seen, uh, watching people operate these things for the first time is um, a background with um, things that actually you have to fix in real life so that can be um, an RC car, an RC plane, RC helicopter, a drone, hmm. um, other things like uh, operating a, a boat even if it's a kayak or a canoe, uh, uh, any kind of vessel that goes on the water Dwight, is this area also called Northwest Northwest Hawaiian Ridge? Uh, y yeah, yep, that's right. Um, this area that's well, we're, we're on Lily Kalani Ridge, so it's separate. The Northwest Hawaiian Ridge would be um, where the Northwest Hawaiian Islands are, mm. so including the seamounts and the land that's underwater there. Mm. So. Uh, we're close to it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. So it seems like almost being able to maneuver anything out of your ability to, anything you got to fix and you can make it work is what will help you be a good ROV pilot. Yeah, the... <laughs> Uh, I might be wrong with some of the modern video games, but the, one of the things that you can't get from a simulator is um, moving a, ma a mass through through 3D space, which is basically what we're doing when mm -hmm. we're operating a vehicle. So. Um, you mean for the physics to be realistic, or? Yeah, to learn how it how it behaves. I see. Uh, the simulators historically have been really good for um, getting familiar with the software. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the commercial systems will have a simulator, and that's not really meant to become proficient operating the ROV. It's for the operators to become familiar with the software required to operate the ROV. So it's just like if you download a new program, it takes you 
a while to figure out all the bells and whistles and what the quirks are and what works well and what doesn't. And that's very helpful to be able to come in and to walk into this environment. And for example, if we had a Hercules simulator and the kids that came out here were all, you know, had spent hours on a computer and they know where all the buttons and the pages were and what all that all that was fami familiar to them when they first sat down and they wouldn't have to be intimidated by learning new software as well as operations. Some of those RC vehicles too, I think, you know, it's moving mass through real space and then it's also like getting turned around and flying it back towards you and having that kind of like being able to flip your brain quickly to keep track of where you are and like remapping the, the controls pretty quickly. And also all the different environments, you know, you have a, a nice day to fly your drone and or mm -hmm. uh, take the same drone out when it's, you know, blowing 20, 30 knots and try it then. Mm. I've, uh, like hit the max wind limit of my drone and was pretty <laughs> worried I was going to lose it. But yeah, kind of yeah. just like this. I came up high enough off a ridge and the uh, the wind was just ripping in a way that it wasn't a little bit lower down. Have you guys heard K2's story about his drone? Mm -mm. Um, like some weird software glitch happened while it was flying and all of a sudden it really wanted to go to zero, zero. Oh yeah, but like <laughs> zero zero in the world, which is I think somewhere in Africa. Uh, <laughs> North <laughs> North Atlantic. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> what it um it rose, it got as like much altitude as it could, and then just made a beeline for, I guess the North Atlantic. <laughs> it's uh, close to Africa. If you're on your way from Africa back to um, well, like uh, Europe, you can make a little detour and go to <laughs> zero zero. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, he hit, hit some trees and yeah. he's able to recover it. Um, oh, yeah, I can answer this one. Um, so I actually work on the UUV simulator. Um, I didn't build it. Another uh, grad student did. Um, my project is on autonomous vehicle navigation, and so I've created... Uh, navigation capability uh, on top. I, I guess I should zoom out a little bit. The UV simulator stands for Unmanned Underwater Vehicle Simulator, and it's an open sourced uh, simulation platform where um, you can kind of put any vehicle you want as long as you provide the URDF files, um, whether it's an ROV, an AUV, and it comes with a physics engine. Uh, a lot of simulated sensors and hydrodynamic plugins, so that the vehicle should behave somewhat realistically in the water, like you know, moving mass through 3D space. Um, and my contributions to it are to uh, so like right now, if you ask the vehicle where it is, it'll tell you exactly where it is, which is unknowable information because underwater you can only estimate where you are based off of um, a fusion of all your sensor uh, inputs. And I, I think like right now there's not really like a great standardized simulation that, um, that people can use. So when you build this vehicle, uh, the simulation is sort of this last step that you check off of a long checklist and they become really specific. Um, you might only be, be able to use them in a particular mission or set of circumstances, and people end up having to reinvent a lot of wheels for it. So the hope is that um, we can use this platform, or anybody can use this platform to put in their vehicle and their autopilot, essentially, and test how it works in a variety of environments before putting the expensive robot in, into the field. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm grateful for the, <laughs> the students who've made that. Uh, That's a great project too. It, you, you're using all the real sensors that we're using on the vehicles, right? You have a DVL and an yeah. IMU. Yeah. And 
USBL and you can simulate currents and different kind of conditions. Have you, um, is there any uh, blender stuff? Any blender crossover there with the simulation? Where any, sorry, what? Uh, blender using 3D modeling. So that I'm unfamiliar. Not sure. So there's some, uh, Blender's a 3D modeling software that's open source free and it's quite popular, been used in movies and uh, animation and uh, it's, used for, you know, you can design a, a whole room or a, an, an object, and it's getting quite powerful. Like, it's, it's people good enough that can do a human face or the classic uh, tutorial, a donut, that looks like a real, you know, it's hard to tell the difference if you're looking at the image. But they have, um, there's some uh, underwater environments where they're simulating the what it looks like to us. Uh, so you have the sunlight filtering through or the bathymetry. So Tim's been playing around with it. He's got a, a model of uh, Nautilus and Hercules. And he's uh, his thing is pulling the bathymetry maps and the data, manipulating the data. So he's showing like the dive, the dive track. But you can, uh, there's some crossover there from Blender to um, to, to uh, the URDF, to the model, for the environment, gazebo-like stuff. I was going to say it'd be cool if you took like the actual amount of DVL scattering or something from different substrate or different, you know, environments and could use that as your noise in the simulator. Yeah, so I, I haven't touched the DVL noise too much. Like everything starts out with like a... Gaussian, just yeah, forever. Yeah. But we have made the IMU behave pretty realistically, mm. so that it has like some sort of magnetic bias and then some sort of heading dependent bias. Cool. Um, and so that seems like a step in the right direction. Yeah. And then the next step would be like like you said, DVL scattering based on where you are. Yeah. Um, what's another one? I don't know. I think some of the other sensors are pretty robust, like pressure seems okay and all that. Yeah. What about um, changing the uh, temperature or salinity of the water? Are so I thought a lot that? about that, but um, I, I guess like if I do want to graduate. <laughs> 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 no, 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 but this, this is a real thing because um, my pipe dream is to uh, coordinate a group of vehicles and um, I, I would like to prove that they can work together in a mission first in simulation and because um, a lot of people have done like 2d th like very simplified 2d and 3d simulations of things but they simplify things so much that I think the result is um, not really useful in the end and like when you simulate stuff you're sort of doomed to succeed because you'll get an answer no matter what mm -hmm. um, whether or not it's meaningful is that's the hard part I think so um, because part of the challenge is how s sound travels through water is really tough I thought that I might have to create this 3d space where you put in values of salinity and temperature um, and my, my advisor said that that's a good idea but uh, calm down <laughs> so yeah I think that would be really Maybe great to work with like an acoustician. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've heard that like if your PhD, your PhD basically should leave enough new questions that other people could come do their PhD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I mean, if I were the student who built this UV simulator, I would be really proud. I, I can't believe one student did that. So when was that made? That's five years old now? Or? Yeah, I think 2018. Yeah, who did like that, that, Katachi? Um, she's a student from Germany. Uh. Um, <laughs> I know her GitHub well. <laughs> her name is Mura, I think, M-U-R-A. 
Oh, she wasn't a uh, GSO student or a no, no, engineering she, student. No, uh, she was in uh, Germany. Is the code well commented, or is it quote unquote research code? Or it's, it's pretty good for yeah. research code. It's yeah. um, it's pretty well packaged, and um, I, I'm really not sure about like what her responsibilities were beyond you know graduating and stuff. But it looked like she was taking care of the repository for some years, and then she probably has a life outside of this. So. <laughs> <laughs> But people keep bugging her about stuff. Uh, uh, is there other collaborators, other devs? Yeah, but not too many. I think she's very picky with who she's oh, really? hands over the keys, keys of the kingdom. Hmm. But people, um, I think that's, I, I'm actually like not very uh, familiar with GitHub either, but I, I think she doesn't let too many people work on the original repository, but you're free to take it and do something else make, with yeah. it. Make branches with it and right. stuff. So there's um, some pretty good work being done by people at OSU and Hui, or and maybe Ibari as well, um, on like a surface vehicle simulator, and they've added a bunch of wave uh, physics. Really? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Um, like the original simulator doesn't take into account anything at the surface, which is mm. fair. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could spin that off and do a video game that would actually be useful for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've seen Flight Simulator now here. <laughs> <laughs> Dive Simulator. Yeah, uh, the whole drone drone craze was kind of like after my RC era. Right? Mm. I grew up with the uh, Bank and Yank, you know, gliders and power, uh, glow powered than uh, electrics, but um, my oldest has started, He first thing he flew was a drone. He's gone through uh, at least half a dozen of them, right? From the yeah. little toys to fairly sophisticated ones now. And um, I can't come anywhere close to him as a drone pilot. Mm -hmm. And I've tried and tried, and I've tried like five different simulators and I can't make yeah. any progress to, to really? I can't get to his level there's like no way I'll ever be but you can do this yeah but a drone's like a different animal aren't it well, I can I can operate one and I can I can fly one and have you know two or three that I fly quite often but I have to uh, I have to work at it he can you know be walking along and having a conversation and <laughs> uh, you know, walk through and open closed gates and just, just uh, fly his drone in and out of the barn. And I uh, I tried one of those, like, FPV racing simulators yeah. for drones, and I was just garbage at it. Like, <laughs> my regular photography, like, DJI one, I can fly that, no problem. But the, um, the like, speed stuff is, is wild. Yeah. This um, is like a flight thing that you're racing, so you have targets.